Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. How is everyone? Feels strange on a Friday night not to be doing the arena, but um, I think this is going to be fantastic. So, um, just in case there are people here who don't know what's going on, um, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you the lowdown. So, many of you now, many of you now uh, are aware of my. my Yeah. Um, right. So many of you are aware now of my argumentation for the truthfulness of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu as a messenger of Allah. Um, I've broken it down into four hypotheses. Now, these four hypotheses has removed any bias. Uh, four hypotheses are four explanations as to uh, what the claim made by the Prophet Muhammad could have been. So what could explain it other than the truth? So if it's not, if, if you don't believe, and I'm sure there's many Christians, many atheists who may be here in the chat, or maybe not yet, but they will probably come, who don't believe that Prophet Muhammad was a messenger of Allah. And the fact that, um, so there has to be another explanation. Uh, this is the same for ex-Muslims who say, oh, I used to be a Muslim, this, that, the other. They themselves have to then explain if it wasn't, if he wasn't a messenger of Allah, then what was he? And thus, we can break the other three alternatives down into two camps. Um, the first camp is the Christian camp. So because Christians do believe in angels, they have really no issue that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the symptom that may be present is oh. disorganization of thought and speech. Hold your fingers, mate. <laughs> okay, so um, the the Christian claim is that they have no issues with angels. So they 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 believe that it was something other than an angel that spoke to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we're not dealing with that today. The other two claims, the other camp is the atheist camp. Now, because atheists don't believe in angels, if a man's claiming an angel speaking to him, there's only two explanations. Either one explanation is that he's a liar, that he's invented this thing. There are no such thing as angels, so therefore he must be making this up. This whole religion was his own concoction for whatever reason it may have been. But the second claim is what we're going to deal with this evening. So the other claim of the atheist to try to explain this phenomena of this experience that the Prophet Muhammad had in the cave 1400 years ago is um, he was a crazy guy. If this guy thought angels were speaking to him, then he must have been suffering from some kind of mental illness because angels don't exist. So if he's claiming an angel speaking to him and he truly believes an angel speaking to him, he must be crazy. So this is what we're going to deal with today. So we're going to go into detail as to could mental illness be an explanation for the claim of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 1400 years ago in the cave of Hira. So now we're bringing, so to help me solve this problem, solve this riddle, or to explain the situation, I'm bringing, mashallah, someone with credential who is qualified to speak on the subject of mental illness. So he, he'll know the, uh, the symptoms of mental illness, the ramifications of mental illness, to see whether or not this is a justified claim that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, uh, was suffering from mental illness. Okay. Now, before I bring him on, I want to first give you the credentials. I can see someone banging on in the chat. So let's give you, let you know who's joining us today. So, mashallah, we have Dr. Abu Isa, who is a senior consultant for addiction and child adolescent and child ad adolescent psychiatrist. So this this is um, his uh, title. He was and, so, and I'll give you a brief background background to him. Okay, so Dr. Avarisa was brought up in the north of the east of England, attending the Royal Grammar School in Newcastle. During which time he was a young scientist of the year. He completed his medical degree at Oxford University as well as a BA honors in psychological sciences. After finishing medical school, he returned to the Northeast to undertake his foundation training and spent one year training in orthopedics. Thereafter, he completed his psychiatric training in child and adolescent psychiatry in Manchester. Dr. Abu Isa is passionate about mental health and well-being and is a sorry and well-being and is a strong advocate for supporting adolescents and young adults with mental ill health. 
He assesses and treats adults, children, young people with emotional, behavioral, and mental health difficulties. In addition to having extensive experience of pharmiotherapy, pharmacotherapy, he has also been trained in delivering psychological therapy. This includes psychodynamic psychotherapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, and family therapy. He has worked as a consultant psychiatrist in a variety of settings, including an adolescent psychiatric, psychiatric intensive care unit. Dr. Abu Isa is currently working in Qatar, where he set up and developed a dynamic specialist substance misuse service for adolescents. Dr. Abu Isa is a practicing Muslim who believes in integrating therapeutic interventions from the Quran and Sunnah with the Western understanding of psychiatry and mental health. He works collaboratively with Mashir and students of knowledge like Ustad Tim Humble on complex cases that require a combination of Rokia psychiatric interventions. His expertise includes working with individuals who have been affected by gym possession and magic. He works with people who have experienced trauma and uses trauma-informed care to help people overcome their crisis. Dr. Abu Isa is actively involved in medical education, including teaching and training of junior doctors and medical students. He is passionate about research and has presented at a number of international conferences, including Australia, Canada, and Mexico, at the World Congress of Psychiatry. His work with young offenders with traumatic brain injury has been published. So this is the qualifications, this is the experience, this is the credentials of the man who is going to, inshallah, present, do a presentation to us as to why it, mental health could not be an explanation for the claim of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 1400 years ago in the cave of Hira. And without further ado, here he is. Salaam alaikum, Akhi. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yasir li yamri. so many long words in that. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Hamza. I was cracking up when you were reading my biography there. I think you need to um, have a medical dictionary and just practice. Oh, I think I think I need to. I think I need to. <laughs> so, mashallah, I think the format of the sh you're going to do a presentation. Um, yeah. You've got slides, you've got videos, you've got all these kind of things that yeah. are going to go to conclude what we believe to be true. Um, and then afterwards, inshallah, we will do a uh, Q&A. Um, yeah. We'll open up the stream. We'll put a link up and we'll bring people on if they've got any questions and such. Okay. I tried that Q&A. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, take it away. Before that, I just wanted to share this with you. Sorry. <laughs> All right, mate. No. No updates from Qatar, by the way, about Manu. Uh, there's still a lot of rumors. I think it, uh, from from my sources, it's it's looking good. Let's see. Like like I said, when Qatar wants something, Qatar gets it. Yeah, definitely. Shawwa, it'd be amazing, yeah. wouldn't it? Because you've got the Saudis with Newcastle, you've yeah. got the uh, Emirates with um, New City, City, and then yeah. you'll have um, Qatar. Qatar with yeah. uh, United. Just need now um, Kuwait to get involved and buy some. Yeah. Thing is, I'll have conflict of interest because I'll have to start supporting United as well because I'm living in Qatar. <laughs> well, I'm surprised yeah. they come from the northeast, man. Is that not conflict of interest? Yeah, I guess so. How are you supporting Man City living in the northeast? I was because I was living in Manchester for about ten years before I came here. So what years? My, my son supports Newcastle. Uh, I was there from uh, 2008 to like 2017. All right, carry on. <laughs> okay, on with um, the show. Let, let's see. I'm looking forward to this. I really am. Yeah, Jazakallah Khair, um, Hamza, um, for this opportunity. Offline, we've been discussing this, um, and Alhamdulillah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has uh, allowed us to, uh, you know, Inshallah. Uh, I think the stream today is going to be a game changer because uh, this claim uh, about the Prophet ﷺ having a mental illness. I have seen this, and to be honest, this is one of the main reasons that I started my YouTube channel about a year ago. Uh, because uh, people with no qualifications, I've not seen a psychiatrist or a neurologist make this claim. It's kind of lay people, um, usually ex-Muslims, uh, with very superficial, if zero knowledge of mental illness, psychopathology, neurobiology, and making these claims that the Prophet ﷺ was hallucinating or was delusional. So I wanted to challenge that. Uh, and I think today, inshallah, this is going to be very good, very uh, informative. It might be uh, at times a bit heavy for people because I, I really need to like take a deep dive into the psychopathology, um, into neurobiology. I'm going to present a very academic and high level presentation, um, inshallah, 
where I'm going to uh, use the diagnostic classifications um, and really like drill down uh, this narrative uh, that, you know, he could have had a, a mental illness. Um, so that's kind of, uh, I wanted to say that. Also, I think as Muslims, obviously we believe in the unseen, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he praises uh, the believers in many places in the Quran uh, about belief in the unseen, you know, alladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb. Uh, and one of the tenets of our faith is to believe in the angels and to believe in the messengers. So for Muslims, um, this is a default position. We believe in the unseen. This is part of our aqidah. So really, the, the objective of this stream um, is to address uh, atheists, Christians, or any people of other faiths who may think that the Prophet ﷺ had a mental illness, and also for some Muslims who may have doubts. So I think, inshallah, we'll, we'll try and uh, bury those today. Just to mention, like, you know, as Muslims, we believe all the prophets were given miracles. Um, so the Prophet ﷺ wasn't the only one uh, who, ha who had the mir miracles, you know. Obviously, you have Yunus alayhi salam, who was swallowed by a whale. Um, uh, Suleiman alayhi salam, he had the ability to communicate with uh, animals and jinn. So, you know, the same claims could be made about any of the prophets. But we're focusing on the Prophet ﷺ because obviously he was the final uh, prophet, okay. Uh, the other thing is... Also, um, just to mention that um, people uh, after today will be able to kind of refute this claim very easily, inshallah. So that was just a bit of a kind of a summary. Uh, if you're happy, I can start. Any yes, questions? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Take it away. So let me. So I've got a PowerPoint. Let me, inshallah, it will work. So I'm, I'm going to just. Dis my camera while this is so. Yeah. So can you see my presentation? Yes. Yeah, because I can't, I can't see myself. So, um, and you can hear me, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bis so, Bismillah. Um, just to mention uh, at the beginning, uh, if any of the viewers have a mental illness, uh, just it's a bit uh, kind of a trigger warning because sometimes talking about mental illness uh, can uh, be upsetting for people. So, uh, please, if you do suffer from a mental illness, um, just is this is a disclaimer. Just uh, you know. If it's too much for you, take a break or whatever and come back later, okay? Um, okay. So, um, this slide basically gives you some of the common diagnoses, um, which people may have heard of. Um, and uh, we're going to focus on uh, schizophrenia or psychosis, okay? Um, okay. So, the two claims that are made by uh, ex-Muslims or atheists are that either the Prophet Sallallahu was psychotic, um, so the picture on the left with the fa multiple faces, this is a diagram diagrammatic or graphic uh, representation of schizophrenia. And the other one on the right is uh, epilepsy, which is quite interesting because epilepsy is actually a neurological condition and not a psychiatric condition. Um, so those who claim that the Prophet Sallallahu when he was re uh, receiving revelation, was actually having epileptic fits. Um, so they need to distinguish that this is a neurological condition. Yes, you can have mental health uh, conditions or symptoms associated with epilepsy, but is, this is something that for people should be clear that schizophrenia, psychosis is a mental illness. Epilepsy is a neurological illness. Okay. Um, so we're going to focus on these two because um, major, major diagnostic criteria cover these areas. Like, for example, I haven't heard anybody say that the Prophet ﷺ, you know, had severe psychotic depression or had bipolar disorder. So these are the two commonest claims, and inshallah, we will address them. Uh, Hamza, if you need to ask any question, if you need me to clarify, just please interrupt me, okay? All right. Okay, so this is a very important slide. Um, uh, this is important because um, it is a definition of mental illness. So... Uh, Hamza, I always hear you talk about definitions, you know, particularly when you when you have discussions and discourse with people, philosophical discussions, it's very important to define everything, terms uh, at the start. Um, and mental illness uh, has clear definitions, okay? So we have, um, I'll go on to in, on the next slide, we have two diagnostic systems that we use to define mental illness. So th this is something called the DSM-5. Uh, a definition okay so i'm just going to quickly talk through that so basically a mental disorder is a syndrome which is characterized by some clinically significant disturbance in somebody's thinking in somebody's ability to regulate their emotions or behavior and that dysfunction uh, uh, impacts their life okay um so 
as you can see on that slide, um, so a mental illness is a behavioral or a psychological syndrome or pattern that occurs in an individual. It reflects an underlying psychobiological dysfunction. What that means is basically there's an issue with either the psychology uh, of the individual or the neurobiology, so kind of chemicals and neurotransmitters in the brain. And point three, uh, which is really important, is that the consequences have to be clinically significant distress. That's why I've put a big yellow, uh, kind of uh, red uh, uh, outline. Um, what that means is that it's not good enough just to say, oh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he saw an angel, so that was a hallucination. Okay, so we, we need to drill these people more. They need to justify, okay, if he did have uh, hallucinations, how does that then translate into a mental disorder? Because, inshallah, later on in my presentation, I will show you that um, these kind of abnormal or uh, hypervigilant experiences, which can also occur in the general population. So just because somebody heard something when nobody could, uh, else could hear it or see something strange, that doesn't automatically uh, translate into a mental disorder. So this is important. Okay, and then uh, number four must not be merely an expected response to common stresses or losses. So like if somebody loses a wife, um, they would normally have low, low mood, okay? And it should, it's a result of social deviance or conflicts with society. So that's important. Now, uh, within mental illness, we've got something called severe mental illness, okay? And the severe mental illness includes schizophrenia, major depression, uh, and bipolar disorder. So we, inshallah, we, 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 we're going to show that the Prophet ﷺ did not have schizophrenia because this is what the claim uh, is made. Okay, so far so good, Hamza? Can you yeah, you. Yeah. Okay. 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 So um, this is this is uh, two classifications we use in mental health. Okay. So uh, we have the ICD, which is the International Classification of Diseases, and this is produced by the World Health Organization, and we're currently on the eleventh version. And then we have the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM, and we currently are on the fifth uh, version. Okay. Um, and uh, this is produced by the American Psychiatric Association. What's really interesting is that basically the history of psychiatry is very uh, interesting. Um, the classification of uh, mental disorders began with two Frenchmen uh, in the 1800s, uh, and then that kind of uh, developed into these uh, classificatory systems. So with, with respect to DSM, uh, it was first introduced in 1952 uh, after the U.S. military decided that they needed to have a classification of mental disorders. Um, and what was, Hamza, you, you'll be... Uh, surprised with this. So homosexuality was actually defined as a mental illness uh, by DSM. And only in 1973, when they had the third revision, because of uh, social pressure in the US, um, the, the movement for homosexual, homosexuality was kind of gathering pace, they removed that um, from the classification. Um, so uh, for brothers and sisters, it's important to, uh, for you to realize that the classification of mental disorders is very fluid. And this is why they uh, do a revisions every couple of years, uh, because they remove diagnoses, they add diagnoses, they revise diagnoses. Um, so it's a very nuanced discussion, which is why when people claim, oh, the Prophet ﷺ had a mental illness, this is a very um, uh, kind of illogical and irrational statement without follow-up um, justification. Okay. Right. So let's move on to psychosis. Psychosis. What is psychosis? Um, essentially, it's basically disconnection from reality, okay? So people who are psychotic will have false beliefs or experience things that aren't real. Um, and it, it isn't a condition. So it's actually a term that describes a collection of symptoms. Um, and within psychotic illnesses, there are two key uh, types. Um, and most of the, uh, the audience will be aware of these. So we have hallucinations and we have delusions. So hallucinations, these are when parts of your brain basically mistakenly act like they would uh, if your senses, hearing, vision, touch, smell, and taste, pick up on something actually happening, okay? And then what are delusions? Delusions are basically fixed false beliefs that conflict with reality. Um, and hallucinations and delusions are merely descriptions of lived experiences. So they do not in and of themselves denote a mental illness, okay? So they have to be accompanied by um, problems in your functioning. So you can't sleep, you can't eat, you have interpersonal problems, you maybe you, you can't go to work. Um, so those symptoms in themselves don't denote a mental illness. So, so far, 
what uh, people say is that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, had hallucinations. Okay, if he had hallucinations, but then did it affect his functioning? If you believe that, um, and inshallah, we will answer that question. Okay, so what are the risk factors for psychosis? Who develops it? Um, it's difficult to know exactly the number of people who experience psychosis, uh, but if you look at the studies, and again, I will refer to um, research studies just to give weight to my argumentation. Uh, around 15 to 100 people out of 100,000 develop psychosis each year. Okay, and usually it begins begins in young adult life when a person or when a person is in their late teens to mid 20s. However, people can also experience uh, psychotic episodes. So I've treated patients who've been psychotic at the age of eight, um, and then also older older age um, individuals. Um, before somebody becomes acutely psychotic, there's usually uh, some kind of change in behavior, um, and some of the signs that you would see. And the reason I'm mentioning this is when we look at the sira, uh, just uh, assess whether you saw whether we have any documentation or a record of these kind of behaviors uh, in the Prophet Sallallahu Okay, so people begin to feel suspicious. They have paranoid ideas. Uh, they begin to have problems with uh, relationships with other people. They they have disordered thinking. They can't speak clearly. They become incoherent. Um, they start withdrawing themselves from social situations. Um, they have unusual, overly intense ideas, strange feelings, or lack of feelings. Um, they they can't tell the difference between what's reality and what's fantasy. Um, maybe they they have emotional disruption, anxiety, lack of motivation, and overall uh, they have poor functioning. And this is from the National Institute of Mental Health. Okay, what causes um, psychosis? So uh, I want to make it clear. So psychosis is. Uh, an illness that includes schizophrenia. So all psycho uh, all schizophrenics are psychotic, but not all psychotic patients are schizophrenic. Okay. So what are the causes of a psychotic illness? Like I mentioned, schizophrenia. This is the commonest cause. Uh, you have something called brief psychotic disorder. This is where the symptoms last for less than a month. Then you've got delusional disorder. So something uh, really interesting called capgras is an example. So somebody who suffers from this, they they only have a fixed delusion that somebody they love has been uh, switched by someone else. So they believe that, that, for example, their wife or their husband or their son isn't actually who they claim to be. Uh, then you've got schizoaffective disorder, which is a combination of kind of mood disorder and schizophrenia and so on. And substance use also. Um, so uh, as you mentioned, Hamza, I'm working in the substance use field. So pa patients who use crystal meth, who use cannabis, they can uh, develop psychosis. Um, and then you have other medical conditions that can cause psychosis. You have bipolar disorder and major depressive disorder. Uh, things like Alzheimer's and uh, postpartum psychosis. So women, after they give birth, they can also become psychotic. Um, and then other, other causes, misuse of alcohol, prescription medication, severe head injury. So sometimes people, um, especially the frontal lobe, if they have an accident and they damage their frontal lobe, they can become psychotic um, and also trauma. So now if, if we go through those causes, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, never used drugs or alcohol, okay? There's no evidence that he had a traumatic brain injury. There's no evidence that he had any family history of psychosis. So we can exclude those risk factors, okay? So essentially what uh, people are claiming is that he was uh, schizophrenic. Um, and inshallah, uh, as I proceed, um, I will show why he was not, that was not the case. This is a very important slide for people. And again, I apologize if it's uh, very technical, but um, I think we do really need to kind of dig deep into the psychopathology. Okay, so this individual on the right, this guy is called Kurt Schneider. Now, this he's uh, basically one of the founding fathers of modern psychiatry. He's a German psychiatrist, um, very well known, and he um, set up the Heidelberg School of Medicine. And he came up with criteria called first rank symptoms of schizophrenia. So you have to have these symptoms, okay, um, uh, to be diagnosed with schizophrenia. Um, so I'm going to go through them. And, and again, as I'm going through them, uh, all, everyone uh, who is a Muslim who knows about the seerah, think to yourself and reflect, did the Prophet ﷺ have any of these symptoms, okay? So what, what they experience are basically delusions and hallucinations, like I mentioned. Okay, so if we think about delusions, um, there's something called thought broadcasting. So individuals, they believe that their thoughts are broadcast for everybody to hear, okay? Uh, they, they also believe that an external agency like aliens can put thoughts inside their head. Uh, I've seen patients who believe that 
you know, aliens are putting uh, negative thoughts inside their head or they're putting thoughts inside their head that they, they need to like harm other people. Okay. And then there's something called thought withdrawal that an external agency um, like the CIA or the FBI can actually remove your thoughts and then uh, kind of intimately know what you're thinking. Okay. So th these are key symptoms uh, for patients who have uh, schizophrenia. Okay. They also have hallucinations uh, and there's specific type of hallucinations. Um, they have something called um, audible thoughts. So they believe, so the voices they can hear are speaking their thoughts out loud. Okay. So like, for example, if Hamza is thinking now, I need to have a, a burger because he, mashallah, he's always eating during the streams. That thought uh, can, will then be uh, kind of uh, spoken out loud. Um, individuals with schizophrenia, they can hear people arguing. So they hear more than one voice arguing uh, amongst themselves. Uh, discussing the individual in the third person they also comment or they uh, on somebody's actions so if if hamza's eating the voice will say look hamza's eating if uh, if hamza's uh, doing a live stream the voice will say look hamza's doing a live stream so they basically comment on the individual's actions there's something called so a somatic passivity and this is basically where the individual feels that they're not in control of their body so now for example if i drink this they be, I would, if I was schizophrenic, I would believe that I'm not in control of my hand. It was an external agency, like an alien or I don't know, uh, Iblis or anybody who's controlling me, and I can't, I have no control over my body. This is called passivity phenomena. Okay. Um, we also have something called made feelings. So feelings do not seem to be uh, from the individual, but again, somebody else is putting their feelings. So someone else can make you feel happy. Someone else can make you feel sad. Someone else can make you feel angry. Uh, so it's, an, again, an external agency controlling your feelings. Uh, and same with impulses as well. Delusional perception. This is a really interesting um, uh, sign and symptom. So normal, everyday kind of stimuli, people uh, give it a special meaning, okay? So what that, I, I'll give an example. I recently saw a patient um, who basically, whenever he watches Al Jazeera, he thinks that the, um, the news reader is actually speaking to him. Um, and whenever he sees a red car, uh, when he goes outside, uh, he 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 knows that aliens are trying to you know harm him, so he doesn't leave the house when he sees a red car uh, go past his house. So this is called delusional perception. So these are um, symptoms uh, of uh, schizophrenia called for, uh, uh, Schneider's first rank symptoms. For somebody to be diagnosed, they have to have at least two uh, symptoms from delusions, hallucinations, disorganized or incoherent speaking, uh, and disorganized or unusual movements and negative symptoms. Okay. So inshallah, that will be very clear for individuals, for people listening, what is schizophrenia? And does, did the Prophet ﷺ have these experiences? Okay, I'm just going to skip past this because it's quite technical, but it's just to tell people that there's different types of schizophrenia. There's paranoid schizophrenia, catatonic schizophrenia, and etc. Okay, um, this will help summarize what I've just said. So schizophrenia has positive symptoms has negative symptoms and has cognitive or symptoms related to your thinking. So the positive, positive symptoms are hallucinations, which I discussed, delusions, disorganized behavior and speech. Inshallah, the next two or three slides, I will focus on this. So patients who have schizophrenia, they have something called formal thought disorder. What that means is that their thoughts are all jumbled up and their speech becomes incoherent. Um, I will, I will uh, talk about how the Prophet ﷺ produced the miraculous Qur'an. Um, and if he, if he had schizophrenia, how was he able to do that, uh, given that he should have had disorganized behavior and disorganized speech, which was incoherent? Okay, then as you develop schizophrenia, as the years go by, you develop negative symptoms, okay? That including apathy, so they become lethargic, anhedonia, which is loss of interest. Somebody uh, who enjoys watching football will lose interest. Somebody who enjoys, I don't know, uh, swimming will lose interest, okay? The affect, the mood becomes blunted, um, and they have poverty of speech. Again, this is really important, speech, because the Qur'an is a recitation. So individuals with chronic schizophrenia have poverty of speech. You can't really communicate with them. They, they're very kind of usually mute or very limited uh, speech. And then you have cognitive symptoms, which are thought disorders and bizarre behavior. Okay. Um, all right. So this is uh, the negative symptoms. So affective deficit. So you lack facial expression. Um, there's lack of interest in socializing. Um, so the Prophet ﷺ, when he started uh, his, his preaching, uh, 
um, people started joining him, uh, people started accepting Islam, and gradually uh, the Sahaba, the numbers of the Sahaba grew. Um, so if, if the Prophet ﷺ was schizophrenic, how was he able to overcome this lack of interest in socializing? Because he put himself in danger. You know, he used to go and uh, communicate like he went to Taif, he, he went to give da'wah. So somebody who has a psychotic illness is not able to function and is not able to relate to other people and communicate effectively. Okay. And that's the next point mentions communicative deficits. So lacking in speech and lack of motivation. The Prophet ﷺ was very highly motivated um, because he was a messenger of Allah. Uh, he was uh, had excellent social communication skills. Whether or not people believed him, that was a separate issue. But mashallah, he, had, he was very articulate, even though he was illiterate. Okay. Now, this is very important. And this is basically, I play cricket. So for those of you who play cricket, when somebody bowls you a, a full toss, you smash it out of the, the ground and uh, it's a six. Or if it's an open goal for footballers, you know, you basically score. So patients who have schizophrenia uh, have disorganized speech. What is that? Okay. So sometimes it's called word salad because of the way the words are arranged. The speech of a person with schizophrenia often follows grammatical rules, but the content makes little sense. Okay, So they become very difficult to understand. The sentences don't make sense. Uh, the conversations can change from one topic to another without any kind of uh, connection. Uh, and in certain people, the speech is completely incomprehensible. Okay, Now, uh, there are specific types of uh, speech uh, disorders within um, schizophrenia. So I'll just quickly go through this. There's something called derailment. Okay. So the example is there. So when asked about a symptom of breathlessness, so if you ask somebody, okay, why are you breathless? The guy responds, I felt breathless like running a marathon. Marathon, the ancient Greek town. Democracy today has gone wild, hasn't it? So if you were with somebody who, <laughs> who responded like that, would you be able to make any sense of what they said? Uh, I, I think the answer is very clear. They can be tangential. So they give answers in an oblique fashion. So when asked how they hurt their arm, somebody would say, well, I was riding my horse and it was so sunny, but I suppose that is normal for this time of year. I prefer the summer months. So again, it's kind of like tangential. It's not uh, very coherent. So incoherence, next one, word salad. Uh, this is a, quite a common uh, symptom. So they would say glasses without a square battery, mouse, no lacking table is the bottle. And yes, dancer. So it can kind of completely doesn't make any sense. You have Ill illogicality. So drawing conclusions that do not follow the basic logic. I was born on a Wednesday and today is a Wednesday. So it will not rain today. Um, circumstantial speech, excessive long windedness in reaching a conclusion in answer to a question. So when the Prophet ﷺ was asked questions, there's many instances by the Jews, etc. And then he waited for revelation. Uh, SubhanAllah, it's, it's miraculous how he was able to respond with revelation without making any mistakes. Yani it was a, a very precise speech, which goes against somebody who has uh, speech uh, issues uh, in schizophrenia. Pressured speech, they speak very fast. And then they have something called clanging. So the sounds of words uh, can rhyme. Um, so uh, that's another thing that they will uh, frequently have. Okay. Now, this is very interesting. Uh, this is actually published by somebody called Emil Kraplin. Uh, in 1919, again, he is one of the uh, four founding fathers of modern psychiatry. Um, and this is called uh, uh, graphorrhea. Graphorrhea basically is, if you look at it, this is actually a pa two patients, separate patients who have uh, written something on, on paper. And as you can see, it makes absolutely no sense. So they have specific um, uh, signs when they're writing. Okay, So uh, this was published in, in a book called Dementia Preco and Paraphrenia. Uh, by Emil Kreplin. Uh, he was born in 1856. And what he said was that patients who have schizophrenia can sometimes be identified by a sample of writing, which you see there. And he said that it has a particular signature. So they have elaborate capitals, um, there's flourishes on individual letters, uh, there's multiple strike throughs, and there's inappropriate underlining. Okay. Um, and then there's somebody called Eugene Bloiler, again, a, a founding father of modern psychiatry. He was the one who actually termed, uh, coined the term schizophrenia. And he said that the distorted grammatical construction of sentences, the incomprehensible word usage, um, is basically uh, a sign of schizophrenia. So again, we, we have the Qur'an, which has been preserved for 1400 years. Um, and if anybody opens the Qur'an, I think it's very clear to understand it. And definitely there's not any writing like this 
where it's incomprehensible and uh, nobody can really understand what's going on. Okay, I want to share a video, but I think I will share it from my file. So if I let me just interrupt you a second. Um, yeah, what it is here in the UK is approaching market of time, and people are gonna. Let's have a break. Uh, Let's have a break. Yeah. Yeah. So we can do another five minutes. Oh, oh how long is this video? Uh, video is about uh, three minutes. Let's watch the video, then we can have a break. Let's watch the break for Maghreb, yeah. because like I say, just a quick one. People in the chat yeah. saying, oh, why don't you do this after Maghreb? Understand one thing. Dr. Abouis is in Qatar now. So he's two hours ahead of us, first thing. Second thing, it's not just people in the UK who watch what we do here. People from the US, people from different parts of Europe, and got different time zones from Malaysia, Indonesia, all different types of places. So we're not. it's not a... Euro or should I say UK centric uh, audience that we have. So some people, yeah, we we accept it's Maghreb time, but you're never going to please all the people. You know, I want to start at nine thirty as usual. Doctor Harris, oh, come on, it's going to be like eleven thirty. So we reduced it to eight thirty, and obviously, but inshallah, we're going to uh, we'll break for Maghreb inshallah. Definitely. So we'll hear this video, um, yeah. and then we'll break for Maghreb, um, and then we'll reconvene inshallah. Okay. The thoughts are disconnected, and when a person speaks, uh, there's either a great deal of uh, um, tangential, circumstantial, rambling kinds of uh, lack of connectedness of one thought to the other. Like in the daytime, when I'd be outside in the sun, I used to show my friends things that they hadn't seen before, like the halo. See, like the halo, I, when I was 19, when I was preaching, and I had my trial sermon, I used to see the light on my shadow on the ground in the daytime, and then now, from ever since then, it's like the light coming further down over my body, around, around my shadow. It's over my body, but around my shadow, and I see the light, which is your halo, I mean your, your aura. And that's why everybody can't see that. But if you, if you, if you see, you got some new drugs too, we say. And now I don't know what for real. I know what I see, but I don't know if for real or not. And so that's why, that's why you say people are different. And see, like that anointing, like, see, like, or sometimes when I come outside, um, I can see uh, when I look at the trees, the wind start blowing. Cause we know we get oxygen from the plants and we get them carbon dioxide. And so it's the wind usually blows sometimes, but it don't blow all the time. Like when I'm in the house a long time, it blows real strong. Okay. Um, so that was an example of a patient who has disorganized speech, um, schizophrenia. So um, I'd, let, I'd let people think, uh, is it possible that the Prophet ﷺ had schizophrenia? When you actually see an individual who has schizophrenia and has disorganized speech and you can't make a sense of what he's just said. If I ask you, Hamza, what can you summarize what the what he just said? What would you say? Okay, so he was talking about that when he looks at his shadow, he sees a halo on his shadow yeah. reflecting. And the, then he was talking about I don't know why he's talking about the trees. I was trying to follow the line of things. So the trees, when you see the trees blowing and they provide oxygen and carbon dioxide. Yeah. Carbon monoxide. Um, and then but the trees are blowing. And I, what's that got to do with anything? Exactly. See, this is the this, this thing is, you see, mental illness is my Achilles heel. It's my kryptonite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's incoherent. I'm, I'm lost. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is that he, he had, he, he's a schizophrenic patient and he had some of the symptoms I just outlined in terms of disorganized speech and disorganized thinking. That's why he's kind of going, going all over the place and it's not really uh, coherent. Um, okay, so let, let's break, inshallah, let people pray, Maghrib, and then we can reconvene. Are you going to carry on talking in the break about other things or what? Um, I, whatever, if people want to ask questions, I can answer. Or Yeah, you just respond to people's chat, yeah. Um, okay. At least, at least, and then anyone who's missed that because of the Salah, inshallah, um, this video will be live anyway. Sorry, it will yeah. go up with the video anyway. Sorry, this live will go up as a video, so you can e easily rewatch it, inshallah. I, I don't know what this character's on about. He said, there's no point in doing this. And then he says, dangerous territory, guys. No, it's what? not. We've got an expert in the what, house. What, what's his point? I don't get it. Yeah. Um, I, 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 this, bro. <sighs> I told you, some of, the, the, some of the worst questions I get and people I get on my stream are Muslim or with Muslim names. And you're like, my God, you're walking around in society and everyone thinks you're a Muslim and you're representing Islam. And what you say is Islam. Please, please, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. Right, I'm going to go pray. Okay, so like Islam.
Okay, um, so I'm Hamza, I guess, for the next few minutes. Um, if anybody has any specific questions, um, inshallah, there's still quite a lot of stuff I need to cover. I hope it's it's beneficial. Please give feedback um, because it's very difficult to kind of go into very nuanced and uh, detailed discussions about mental illness. Um, so I'm trying to like summarize it so people can understand it. But yeah, there's definitely going to be some stuff that might be a bit complicated. Um, the praised one, does stuttering count as schizophrenia? No, stuttering does not. There are different reasons why people stutter. Uh, Musa alayhi salam had a stutter and used to make this dua. Rabbish rahli sadri wa yasirli amri wa hlo luqtata min lisani yafqahu qawli. So there's different uh, speech impediments that can cause people to stutter, but typically it's not an issue with pa patients with schizophrenia. Um, Dr. Abu Isa, what was John Nash suffering from? John Nash, sorry, I don't know who John Nash is. Sorry for my ignorance. Jazakallah um, khair, Jamil. Okay, Jazakallah khair, Ambreen. Hindsight 2020, I hope I don't offend. Um, but does anyone know anything about Muhammad Salam's childhood? Yes, we have uh, quite a lot of information. Uh, so Ibn Ishaq is um, a historian who's recorded the Prophet Salam's uh, early life. But uh, the issue with Ibn Ishaq is that he doesn't only rely on authentic narration. So he has Israeliat, the stories of the Jews and the Christians, and also weak narrations. Um, so, but yes, we do have quite a lot of information about the Prophet Sallallahu biography, including after when he was a, a child. Um, Doctor, are you saying that out of psychotic options, only schizophrenia? Sorry, it's going a bit fast. This thing. I don't think we've slowed it down. Uh, da, 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 where is it? No, the like I mentioned, there are different causes of psychosis. Schizophrenia is the commonest cause, but you also have other things like drug-induced psychosis. You also have uh, postpartum psychosis. You have uh, uh, de uh, depression associated with psychosis. So there's different mental disorders that can make somebody psychotic. Okay. Um... What could be said about the accusation of non-Muslims that the Prophet ﷺ has been trembling? I'll cover that in the second part of my presentation. Um, that They say that he had some physical manifestations, which they claim was uh, epilepsy, but I'll prove that it's, it wasn't epilepsy. Uh, Salam, doctor, do you have any nerdy hobbies besides science? Um, yeah, I, I love football. I love cricket. Um, I love socializing. Um, I'm sorry if I come across as a bit of a nerd, but i um, very passionate about mental health. And I think it's really important that we have professionals um, who can have an academic discussion um, uh, using science um, and evidence base and combine that with Islamic uh, understanding. Uh, okay. Salam, doctor. Okay. Jazakallah khair, Muzon. Uh, okay. When you, uh, Zak and me as well, when, it's going very fast. When you're scared, you tremble. Does that mean you're mental? Christians are mad. Um, yeah, so you have something called the uh, acute stress response. And I'll talk about that, inshallah, in my presentation. Um, so you can have that. Can jinn possession be diagnosed as schizophrenia? Good question. It's something, inshallah, we'll discuss in further streams. I have done some. If you go to my YouTube channel, I've done some videos with Gabriel Romani about how we can distinguish between psychosis or uh, mental illness and gin possession. Is it possible for schizophrenic individuals to have normal social interactions, something akin to autism? Yes. Um, just because somebody has schizophrenia doesn't mean that they, they can't function, uh, but they have to have treatment. And again, inshallah, I'll cover this in my uh, remaining presentation. Uh, what else? Of these cases discussed, can there be milder versions to the point you can barely notice it? Jamila, yes, that there there is, uh, but that would not be classified as a mental disorder because it doesn't cause impairment in functioning. Uh, quote: Nevermore. He dreamed of raping Aisha. He raped his daughter-in-law because Allah lifted a curtain. He commanded beating women uh, for fear of future disobedience. He thought Jesus was switched. Shaitan tripping. Okay. Um, 
I think that your allegations or claims have already been answered many times in in streams, so I would uh, not really want to address your points there. Uh, even if Muhammad Sallallahu wasn't crazy, there are still other ways non-ill people can hallucinate. And so, how do you rule that out? Um, I will I will answer that towards the uh, end of my presentation. Can fasting for long periods of time uh, be similar symptoms? No, it cannot. Starvation can cause you to be um, disconnected from reality. So, for example, in Guantanamo Bay, um, the CIA, they used uh, torture mecha mechanisms that were created by psychologists and psychiatrists uh, called sensory deprivation. Um, so what they did is they, uh, subhanAllah, they used to uh, deprive the, the Muslim brothers from a hearing. So they, you've probably seen uh, pictures of them with kind of headphones on and uh, deprive them of their eyesight for days on end, uh, play very loud heavy metal music, and that induced uh, uh, psychotic states. Uh, so that is possible. So somebody who's starving can become delirious, but not uh, necessarily psychotic. Okay. Uh, even if Muhammad Sallam wasn't crazy, there are still other ways. Yeah. So I've mentioned briefly, and I will talk about this, is something called um, psychotic-like experiences. Okay. Uh, Fatima, assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam. My nephew is an orphan and has schizoaffective disorder. He has cerebral palsy too. What advice do you have as he struggles with the deen? Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested him. So, cerebral palsy is uh, is very debilitating as as is schizoaffective disorder. Uh, so, as you know, um, there's a very famous hadith, authentic narration, um, that the pen is lifted from three individuals. Uh, and one is the one who is insane, uh, who lacks capacity until he regains his sanity. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless him and heal him. Um, my advice is that um, he should be consistent with his medication. Uh, but cerebral palsy, I don't know what it does in terms of his intellectual ability. Is he, does he have like learning difficulties or is he um, functioning? Uh, Gonzo Ales, can psychosis be caused by brain tumors in surgery? Yeah, yes. So uh, brain tumors can induce psychotic states as well. Um, Costa, can Muslim and Christians live together in peace? Because when we die, we will be in the same place on the day of judgment by God. Um, so I've, as I'm sure you've probably seen streams uh, with Hamza. Either Islam is true or Christianity is true. We can live in uh, peaceful coexistence. Um, and Islam teaches us to respect other religions. But at the end of the day, we have to invite people to Islam because we believe Islam is true. Uh, and if you die denying Islam, uh, then uh, you will be judged accordingly and uh, your final abode uh, will be the hellfire if you if you reject uh, that Islam is the, uh, the religion that Allah has chosen. Hallucinations can also be experienced in delirium, can't they? Correct. So delirium is, again, a, a brain state where people lose sense of reality. It can happen. Uh, for a number of reasons, usually medical reasons. Um, okay, what else? Uh, Salam, people, how much have I missed? Nasr, you can, it's recorded, so inshallah, it, you'll be able to watch. Uh, what's Hitler? Uh, sorry, I don't get that. Doc, why don't you try get Ijaz to Qatar so they can treat him in a Muslim country? Um, SubhanAllah, I actually met Ijaz in Qatar. He came for the World Cup um, to give da'wah and he actually ended up being hospitalized in uh, Hamad Medical Corporation. So I actually uh, did visit him and um, recommended treatment for him. The issue is for, for him to come to Qatar, he needs to, um, the treatment is very expensive or he needs to try and get a job here, then he can get treatment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and give shifa to all those individuals who have um, physical or mental health issues. Uh, Khalil, what's the difference between loss of reality and schizophrenia? So loss of reality can be caused by different issues and schizophrenia is one of those. Um, oh, Hamza is back. Hamza, it, it's not on slow mode, so I was like trying with, my, it's like a machine gun trying to like answer all these questions. It should be on slow mode. I don't know, so unless you're just an expert at reading messages very quickly and answering them. Uh, your problem is you're reading the messages on uh, YouTube. Yes, correct. You should be on StreamYard. No, no, it's, I'm reading on StreamYard. Well, it's not going that fast. 
Okay, maybe when you popped up, they were going slow. Okay, I've put it on a minute 20 now anyway, so... Okay. All right, let's continue, inshallah. Okay. Uh, everybody ready to go? Uh, share screen. Okay, hang on, I need to put it back. <clears throat> Had some strange questions, Hamza. Bro, i tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Um, Jazakallah khair. Let's continue. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. Um, so what happens if you don't treat mental illness? Um, there's been a lot of research um, and long-term studies. Um, they, what happens to people who don't have treatment is that their mental state becomes worse. Uh, they can develop chronic physical health problems uh, because chronic stress is associated with a risk of heart attacks, strokes, obesity, premature death, and many other symptoms associated with mental illness can also lead to serious health issues. Uh, <clears throat> people become can I just stop you a second. Can you full screen that or not? Uh, one sec, bro. Is it full screen now? Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so it, people can become homeless and lose their jobs because serious mental illness makes it difficult to cope with the demands of daily life. Again, everything let's reference to the Prophet. ﷺ. Did he have stressful life? Definitely. Um, untreated serious mental illness causes significant deterioration in functioning. People become incarcerated, people experience victimization and trauma, and there's also uh, many studies that show people with untreated mental illness um, are at high risk of suicide. This is a very interesting um, uh, slide because it kind of it's by the Mental Illness Policy Organization, which advises the U.S. government on uh, how uh, we need to treat uh, mental illness because of the consequences. Um, so uh, I've highlighted uh, homelessness, incarceration, episodes of violence. Um, so uh, with p p patients who don't have treatment. Um, so if you look at the Department of Justice report, they found uh, that of spouses killed by a spouse, 12.3% uh, had a history of untreated mental illness. Of the children who are killed by their parents, around 15 to 16% um, had a history of untreated mental illness. Of parents who are killed by their children, subhanAllah, around a quarter um, of the defendants had a history of untreated mental illness. And siblings killed by each other, around all, all one in five almost had an untreated mental illness. So there is a significant increased risk of violence um, towards family members, victimization, suicide. Um, so these are the clinical outcomes. So what if we are to believe the allegations or the claims by people that the Prophet ﷺ had a mental illness, we have to believe he had a mental illness and also that it was not treated. Um, so how is it possible for him to have an untreated mental illness and achieve everything that he achieved? That's a question for people to answer. This is a, um, a technical slide, but basically, let me I'll, actually, I can use a laser pointer. Just bear with me. Okay, so on the x axis, you have time. Let's go back, back to school, Hamza. On the y axis, you have symptom severity. Okay, so you have uh, as you go as time passes, patients who develop a psychotic illness they start to develop symptoms, and this is called the prodromal phase. Okay. So this is what I mentioned earlier, that they may have some changes in behavior or they may kind of become isolated and um, kind of have some bizarre issues. And then at, at a certain point, the symptom severity reaches the point where it becomes a full-blown psychotic illness. Okay, this is where patients completely lose sense of reality um, and they become a danger to themselves or other, other people. And then when you uh, treat somebody, first episode psychosis, the symptoms go down, okay? Uh, and then with treatment, the symptom severity goes down where you have early recovery and late recovery. So if we're to believe that the Prophet ﷺ had a psychotic illness, it would mean that his symptom severity would keep going up and up and up because he didn't have any treatment. Okay, this is a similar slide, um, but basically emerging symptoms on the y-axis, time on the x-axis, prodromal phase, which is the early stages, and then a full-blown psychotic illness. Um, and if you look at we have something in mental health called, called early intervention. All of the studies show that the earlier you intervene for mental illness, the better the outcomes. Okay, and this this slide basically shows like um, like here the the person has first contact with anyone, then first contact with the, any 
mental health service. So you can see the symptoms gradually become worse until they start getting treatment here. Um, I'm going to skip this, but basically this is um, pathological processes, what's happening in the brain, okay? Um, so you have lots of different processes, things like pruning and myelination and all this stuff. So we have a lot of information about um, neurobiology of uh, psychosis and schizophrenia. Um, so here's what we call endophenotype, uh, which is basically what are the symptoms that occur in patients who are sch uh, schizophrenic. Okay, this, this is a, a study that was done and published in Pharmacogenomics, okay? And basically, I just want you to focus that here, again, there's different stages of an illness, pre-morbid, prodromal, and then you have the chronic residual. And what are the features? So somebody who's pre-morbid pre -morbid stage, they'll have mild physical anomalies, uh, issues with their coordination, okay? Then prodromal, you have mood symptoms, anxiety, sadness, sleep issues, loss of concentration, you start becoming suspicious withdrawn then you get the full-blown psychotic uh, episode here where you have like uh, cognitive or issues with thinking negative symptoms and then the chronic or residual negative symptoms i'm sure many of uh, the viewers uh, have seen patients with chronic severe mental illness often they require residential uh, rehabilitation because their families can't look after them they and if you go and visit them you'll see that you know subhanallah they, they're suffering a lot so again, if we are to believe that the Prophet ﷺ had a schizophrenic illness or psychotic illness, how is he not exhibiting any of these symptoms without treatment, okay? Which is impossible. Because here is what is the treatment recommended. This is all evidence-based, okay? So at, when you start getting the onset, you have to have antipsychotic medication and then uh, also uh, new uh, psychotherapy as well. I just thought of a good idea of a stream. We, yeah. we should we should do like an, a psychoanalysis of the Christian missionary speakers at Speakers Corner, and well, yes. we'll have a, we'll play a clip, and then you can diagnose them. <laughs> Good I, idea. Good idea. Um, some yes, of them so seriously are suffering from mental illness. I, I mean, think so. yeah, I literally. think even some, some Muslims uh, who come on your stream probably also have some sort of issues. That no, oh, definitely. But those in Speakers Corner, the way they rant is like. Anyway, yeah. sorry. No, 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 no. Okay, no problem. Um, I just want to show that, alhamdulillah, you know, uh, Muslims are often accused of like not being scientific, and I'm I'm deliberately like mentioning st scientific studies here, okay, to support what what I'm saying. So here we've got something called duration of untreated psychosis (DUP). Do your own research. DUP is very important uh, in terms of a prognostic factor for for outcome. So the longer you have an untreated uh, duration of psychosis, the worse the prognosis. So here, this is a meta-analysis of different studies. So I've highlighted, look, the outcome. Longer DUP predicts more severe negative symptoms and general cognitive impairment, okay? Here also, longer DUP predicts more severe negative symptoms. Type of onset is significant predictor of a two-year pattern of course. So all of the evidence shows that if you don't treat uh, psychosis early on, your prognosis is very poor. Again, this is a slide that's summarizing what happens when you don't treat psychosis. So if we believe that the Prophet ﷺ had an untreated psychotic illness, then we should have seen these issues like lower levels of symptomatic and functional recovery, uh, severe negative symptoms, uh, greater risk of relapse. Again, this is talking about patients who had treatment. What about uh, the Prophet ﷺ who didn't have treatment, if we are to believe that? Okay, these are more studies which I want to just briefly mention. So if you look at this study here, uh, this was uh, conducted in China, and basically they looked at the duration of untreated psychosis and what happens to those patients. And it, it was a four-year study. So it's not like a short study. It's a four-year follow-up study. And what did they conclude? They said that these findings show that despite having a similar level of psychotic symptoms as measured by a specific scale, compared to patients with a short DUP, patients with schizophrenia who have a long DUP, so they compared patients with short versus long duration of untreated psychosis prior to the initial treatment have poorer long-term social functioning. This confirms the clinical importance of early recognition and treatment of individuals with chronic psychotic conditions. Okay, Same, this study here uh, by Harrigan and colleagues, um, this also showed that DUP consistently predicts outcome independently of other variables and is not simply a proxy for other factors. Okay, And this is very interesting. So in this study, they looked at 
what is the life expectancy of patients with schizophrenia. And they found, and this is by the WHO, that there's an average of a reduction of 10 to 25 years of life for patients who have severe mental illness like schizophrenia. Most studies of schizophrenia show a life expectancy reduction by 10 to 20 years. So the point I'm making is that somebody who has schizophrenia and especially who has it untreated will have significant deterioration in their functioning, in their physical health, in their mental health, and their lifespan is significantly reduced. Do we see any of that in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sira? Question. Uh, this sister, systematic review in 2017 found that schizophrenia uh, resulted in a reduction by around 15 years of someone's life. Okay. Um, stigma. This is another evidence I, I'm going to use to prove that the Prophet ﷺ was not mentally disordered. Why? Because stigma, what is stigma? Stigma is basically negative uh, perceptions towards people because of the condition they have. Um, so it can be defined as hate and discrimination. And there's public stigma, self-stigma, okay? And all these studies have looked at stigma. So in within mental health and psychiatry, there's a lot of research looking at stigma because it's an issue. So patients who have severe mental illness like schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, um, even ADHD, they get stigmatized by family members, they get stigmatized by society. So if the Prophet ﷺ had a mental disorder at a time which was 1400 years ago where you would, you would hypothesize that stigma was more of an issue because now we have better awareness of mental illness, then how come he wasn't ostracized by his society? Actually, we see the opposite from his seerah, subhanAllah. We all know that he was called al-Sadiq al-Amin by the Quraysh. So uh, unless you believe that after the age of 40, he became psychotic, because there are some narrations that when he was a child, he had some metaphysical um, uh, experiences. So how is it that in a society where patient, where people, actually the people are aware of epilepsy and mental illness, which I'll prove later on in my presentation, how is it that the Prophet ﷺ was not stigmatized and uh, ostracized because of that? He was because of what he was preaching, but not because of his mental well-being or or any uh, suspected mental illness. Just a quick one. People doing super chats. I'm not going to interrupt the presentation, okay, to just ask questions. Your Q&A um, will be after the uh, presentation. Yeah, I think it's better if you do it at the end, Hamza, because otherwise the flow gets disrupted. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I can see the super chats, but I uh, appreciate the support of the channel. Uh, it's just that... I'm not going to interrupt the presentation to just... And uh, we have time. Inshallah, after the presentation, I can stick around for, for as long as needed so we can answer. Everything. Yeah, no, I'm just talking about the super chat, though, because when people pay yeah, to yeah, ask right. a question, usually you put the, you put the question yes. up, but I, I can't do that because I'm not going to interrupt the flow. Okay. Jazakallah khair. PLEs. What are PLEs? These are called psychotic-like experiences. Um, so these are basically experiences that the general population have. And the study shows around uh, a third of the general population. Some studies say 10%, some say 15%. They surveyed people and they many people report having unusual experiences. So if you look here, this study shows that some people heard someone else's thoughts. Some people had an unusual bodily sensation when no one was around. Somebody felt that their mind was being read, um, hearing something when no one else was around. So like a hallucination type experience, uh, being uh, feeling paranoid. OK, so this is some neurobiology here. What's the difference? So in the top here. You have something called the medial prefrontal cortex and the sensory hyperactivity in that area results in hallucinations, okay? And this results in uh, reality monitoring impairment. So because the brain doesn't function properly, they, they can't tell what's real and what's not. However, in this uh, scenario, this is where patients have these PLEs. They actually have an intact reality monitoring system. So what this shows, Hamza uh, and brothers and sisters, is that many people... Uh, experience like hearing a voice, seeing something that does not equate to a mental illness. And I already quoted to you that around 10, 15, 20, 30 percent of the normal general population report having these experiences. So if somebody claims that the Prophet ﷺ had a hallucination, that does that's not enough to uh, for them to then uh, progress that argumentation to say he has a mental disorder. And this is this is evidence for that. So somebody, even in my clinical practice, especially with young people, around 30% of children tell me, oh, I hear a voice. Uh, I hear somebody talking when nobody's around, but they're functioning fine. There's no evidence of anxiety, depression. So I just tell them this is a normal experience and you'll grow out of it. Uh, so this is really important. And this here at the bottom, it tells you normal children and adults hear voices. And it kind of summarizes what I've just said. Okay. So this is a very nuanced uh, point. So if somebody comes to you and says, oh, the Prophet had a hallucination, so he's mentally ill. 
uh, you can give them evidence from this, uh, from this that, that that doesn't mean that he had a mental illness just because you claim that he had a hallucination. Um, this is also something uh, uh, that normal, normal, sorry, I mean, people without mental illness experience, hypnopopic and hypnagogic. So when you fall asleep, I don't know, Hamza, if you had this experience, um, uh, people can actually feel uh, or hear something which is not real, okay? So uh, in this study, it shows that 86% actually see something. So maybe you see a shadow, maybe you see like a family member, you, uh, but it's your mind is like playing a trick on you. It's not real. Uh, you might hear somebody calling out to you, Hamza, maybe your wife saying, Hamza, go and do something for yourself. You know, you forgot to do this. You forgot to iron the clothes or something. Um, but you, you know, and then physical, some people feel something like crawling on top of them. So these are normal experiences. Um, so again, having a hallucination does not e equal mental illness. Okay. Right now, this is Islamic, uh, text or, uh, not text, sorry. What I mean is Islamic literature. So hadith. Okay. So what I, uh, there's many hadith about mental illness. Uh, uh, or majnoon, somebody who's uh, mad. Okay, so this hadith about the pen being lifted, uh, this is uh, graded sahih by Al Albani, and it was in in Tirmidhi. So uh, Ali bin Abi Talib he reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that the pen is lifted from three people: a sleeping person until he awakes, a child and, until he becomes an adult, and and an insane person until he regains sanity. Okay. So the point I'm making here is that the Prophet Sallam, he was telling and advising and uh, uh, telling people about uh, insanity. So people were aware of an insane person, yet nobody uh, pushed this agenda or narrative that the Prophet Sallam was was mentally ill. If if he was mentally ill, why would the Sahaba, why would they actually record that? For example, if I'm mentally ill and I have I want to, you know, uh, achieve a particular position in society. Maybe I want to become the next Andrew Tate or whatever. And Hamza is like my agent. He will not document uh, my psychotic episodes. That would be stupid. That would be counterproductive because that would reduce my credibility. So the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, there's narrations mentioning epilepsy and psychosis is actually an evidence for, for his truthfulness and that he wasn't that because the, the Quraysh who were against him would have said, look, uh, you, uh, your prophet is saying, uh, narrating these things about people being crazy, and he himself is crazy, and we don't, we don't have that. Okay. Um, in this hadith, uh, again, Sahih by Al Albani, the Prophet ﷺ narrated by Anas ibn Malik. He said, "I seek refuge from Allah in leprosy, madness, majnoon, elephantiasis, and evil diseases." Okay. And then here uh, in Bukhari, uh, Abu Huraira, he related, uh, narrated that a man came to the Prophet. Uh, while he was in the masjid and called him saying oh Allah's apostle I've committed illegal sexual intercourse so the prophet sallam, he turned his face to the other side but when the man gave four witnesses against himself the prophet sallam, he said are you mad here yeah, um, uh, junoon the man said no so the prophet sallam, said to his companions take him away and stone him so here the prophet sallam, is aware of somebody uh, who could potentially uh, not uh, be sane uh, so again, uh, that was the point I wanted to make with this slide. Okay, I've got uh, some videos I will share with you to illustrate my point. Okay, Hamza? Yeah. So uh, your official diagnosis is uh, schizophrenic psychosis. Is that correct? <laughs> For the time being, yes. For the time being, how do you mean? Oh. My, um, my, uh, my illness does not really fit, you know, in any medical definition. <sighs> 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 Could you uh, describe to us your, your illness and your symptoms? Uh, I suffer from hallucinations. I see and feel and hear 
things that are not real. <laughs> Sorry, is that funny? No. What kind of uh, medication are you getting? <laughs> drugs. Antipsychotic drugs. Do they help? Yes. So the medication makes the hallucinations go away? No. But they help me decide what is real and not real. They help me understand that I don't have to obey and do everything they say. When you say they, uh, what exactly do you, do you see? Demons. Even now? In here as we speak? Yes. Where? <laughs> right there, right behind you. Right behind me. Does he uh, say anything? Yes. What does he say? He tells me to hurt you. He wants me to hit you. He wants me to cut you. I'm tired now. I want you to go. Didn't he tell him twice? Yeah. So that 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 is a psychotic patient, okay? Um, just to give an idea, I have another one here. In a video. Um, this is actually sorry. Let me pause this. This this is a young man who actually had a psychotic episode whilst he was recording. Video. I decided to record me having an episode, which is I'm currently having, and I am going to talk about what I'm experiencing. So, I am currently hearing voices, and they are telling me that there are communist spies out to get me. I have not checked the windows like I normally have because I'm trying to fight it and not, like, Go to that dark, deep hole. Here we go. I... Okay, so there's one voice. It's a man telling me to turn off the... record... Uh, recording software and stop recording. I, before I started recording, I, I'm, I'm kind of fading in and out of, of what's going on, if that makes any sense at all. I don't know. Um, let me explain more. Uh, one second, I'm just trying to cope, and I'm talking to my parents about how I feel, and then the next second, I'm thinking they're communist spies and I just I don't even know I don't know I I I, I'm, I should have wrote a script for this but I I'm not functional enough to write a script but uh, I'm apparently functional enough to record um, I don't know I
this has nothing to do with what's going on, but I ordered this laser pointer on Wish. It's like a shopping app, just like for cheap things. Ordered it two months ago and it came in yesterday. Yeah. It's a laser pointer. See? Look at the background. I don't know, I'm trying to make light of the situation. Uh, when my necklace broke, my, um, I don't know if I mentioned I have this, my security alert. Just wanted to show that, again, he was having a psychotic uh, episode, he could hear voices, um, and he, he said he, he got confused about his parents. At one time, he thought his parents loved him, but then they're also communist spies, so he's having paranoid uh, thoughts, okay? Um, this one is very interesting. This Sending is, three patients. This is a uh, old teaching video about catatonic schizophrenia, and I want you to visualize patients who have chronic schizophrenia and develop catatonia, and then think about what we know about the Prophet Showing characteristic symptoms of stuporous catatonia. <laughs> These patients have been hospitalized from five to fifteen years, and their stupor is not as complete as it was during the acute stages of their illness. The behavior and attitude of these patients, however, has not changed for several years. The leading symptom is immobility and lack of activity. Most of the time, they seem to be oblivious of their environment. Their faces are fixed, and changes of expression, if they occur, are usually due to fantasies or voices which they hear in hallucinations. Other typical symptoms of this condition are negativism, mutism, waxy flexibility, automatic obedience. We will show you these patients first for some time without stimulating them directly other than by the camera and lights. Not bad, my friends. Okay. How are you, Walter? How are you? Well, Tommy told me he's not feeling so bad. How are you? You don't feel like talking? Good day, Nathan. How are you? How are you? Will you shake hands with me? No, come on, shake hands. Real handshake. Shake hands with me. Will you look at me? Nathan, won't you look at me? Sorry. Come on, look at me. What was that? It says shake hands like it's a leaf. You know me. Okay, okay, okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, Goodbye. Okay, let's remove this. So that that was a really interesting video. So you, they had catatonia. So catatonia is basically where you have like motor symptoms. If you saw the 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 examiner, he was able to kind of move the the limbs around. Um, this is called waxy flexibility. So you can move them in any direction. And um, these these are patients who had treatment. So he mentioned that even with treatment, he, they had this catatonia. So um, subhanallah, it's very debil debilitating. Um, and I think it's kind of inconceivable to think that the Prophet had an untreated psychotic illness 
um, because you can actually visualize what that would look like, you know, in terms of catatonia. Okay, so go back to the presentation. Okay, can you see the presentation, Hamza? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I've covered schizophrenia and psychosis, and I'm going to cover now quickly uh, epilepsy, okay, because this is one of the other um, allegations or claims that um, people make that the Prophet ﷺ had epilepsy. So what is epilepsy? Like I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, it, it's a neurological issue, okay? Uh, it affects around 1 in 100 people worldwide, um, and uh, it consists of seizures. So what is a seizure? So seizure is basically a sudden burst of electrical activity in the brain that affects the way a person acts. And the location of this activity determines what the seizure looks like. So there's many different types of uh, uh, seizures or epilep epilepsy. Um, so you can have complex partial seizures. You can have, you know, um, petite mal seizures, grand mal seizures. These are all different uh, types. Um, it's, a, it's a chronic uh, disease that affects the brain uh, of people of all ages. Around 50 million people worldwide have epilepsy. Uh, so it's one of the commonest neurological issues. 80% of the patients with epilepsy live in kind of low to mid middle income countries. 70% um, of people living with epilepsy could live seizure free if they had proper treatment. Um, there's a risk of premature death. Um, and so the reason why people may develop seizures or epilepsy is because of brain damage, um, uh, because of prenatally or perinatally, because of loss of oxygen. Uh, congenital issues, severe head injury, stroke, infections, brain tumors. So those are the causes of epilepsy. Okay. Now, this, Hamza, I had the discussion with you very briefly. This is basically, again, a home run. Okay. So people who claim that when the Prophet Sallallahu had uh, revelation, when he received wahi, he was actually having an epileptic seizure. <laughs> it's extremely uh, illogical because all of the evidence both clinical evidence, um, anecdotal evidence, and also research evidence shows that people who have seizures do not remember what happened during that seizure, okay? Um, so memory is significantly impaired. So if you look at this study here, let me just get my mark uh, laser. This, which seizure elements do patients memorize? So this was a comparison of history and seizure documentation. So what did they find? Um, they found that pa uh, patient's memory of seizure is almost always fragmentary, okay? And I've underlined that there's complete recall of a seizure is almost never obtained. So even in some patients, they may be able to remember kind of fragments, but for the vast majority, they ha have no recollection of what happened, okay? So what happens uh, with memory during seizures? So seizures, especially the ones that start in the temporal lobe. So here, I don't know if you can see it very clearly, the brain consists of the frontal lobe, which is at the front. Then you have the parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and at the back you have the occipital lobe. So temporal lobe epilepsy, um, it can be caused by the hippocampus, okay, which is very sensitive to changes in brain activity. So if the seizures starting here go untreated, the hippocampus starts to uh, harden and shrink. Uh, so the description is it's uh, as if the la librarian has gone on strike. Okay, So information may be stored, but in a disorganized way. And uh, nobody's there to help you find that information. So uh, memory is affected, uh, and we have evidence from uh, neuroanatomy uh, and neurobiology, okay? Now, in this paper, this is from PubMed. For anybody who, who's in the medical field, PubMed is basically the search engine for studies. So we, if you look at seizures, what, they, what have they said? This was published in 2020 by Helena uh, Milka and colleagues. And they've said that patients' memory of seizures uh, semiology is almost always fragmentary. All the rate of correctly remembered seizure elements depends on the seizure type. Complete recall of a seizure is almost never obtained. So I think it's very clear that patients who suffer from epilepsy have pretty much no memory of what happened, even kind of during the, uh, the seizure period. Okay. More evidence about that. So common symptoms during a seizure. You have loss of awareness. You often, you black out. So patients often report that they black out. They feel confused. Uh, they they get distracted, they have loss of consciousness, they're unable to hear, their sounds may be strange or different, they have unusual tastes and smells, flashing lights, 
out of body sensations, feeling detached. These are some of the symptoms that they experience. What about after a seizure? They're slow to respond. They feel tired and confused. They have memory loss. Uh, they have difficulty talking or writing. Uh, they may feel anxious. So if the Prophet ﷺ had a seizure when he was receiving revelation, how was he able to produce uh, the miraculous Qur'an in terms of its linguistic uh, beauty, in terms of it, if the um, uh, you know, predictions that the Qur'an makes? It's impossible. Okay. Again, here, another kind of... Uh, this is from the Epilepsy Society. They have a dedicated page on how epilepsy can affect memory. And again, it talks about epilepsy, pre-ictal, interictal, and post-ictal. And all of those uh, periods of a seizure have a significant impact on memory. Okay. Now, this, these are books. This is a book written by Adam Zeman um, and Narinda Kapoor on epilepsy and memory. So the fact is that it's well known within the neurological field that memory is significantly impaired uh, in people who have epilepsy. And these guys are like very high-flying, high-level academics, professors of neuropsychology, uh, ones in the U.S., Okay, so they've written a very detailed book about this. Um, and then you have, these are some studies that have looked at how memory is affected uh, in patients with epilepsy. Okay, so they think language is affected. Again, language, Quran, recitation, how, how is it possible? So patients have uh, issues with expressive speech. They may have issues with naming, reading, writing, and higher uh, exec executive functioning. In this study, out of 55, it's a small sample size, but the point is, Patients who had temporal lobe epilepsy, 77.4% reported having memory issues, okay? And um, reports of being extremely bothered by their memory in 13%. So again, it's very common. Um, the, the, the subjects, they said they forgot their phone number. Um, and if I don't copy it down right away, a word, a word goes on the tip of my tongue, but I can't get it out. I have trouble in remembering names of people I met last week. I talked to somebody on the phone and don't remember it minutes later. So all these are memory issues that are affected by epilepsy. Okay, now this hadith is in Bukhari, okay? Um, and uh, basically it was narrated by bin Abi Raba. Ibn Abbas said to me, shall I show you a woman of the people of paradise? I said, yes. He said, this black lady came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, I get attacks of what? What's this? Epilepsy. And my body becomes uncovered. Please invoke Allah for me. The Prophet ﷺ said to her, if you wish, be patient and you will enter paradise. And if you wish, I will invoke Allah to cure you. She said, I will remain patient and added, but I become uncovered. So please uh, invoke Allah for me that I may not become uncovered. So he invoked Allah for her, narrated Atta, that he had uh, seen Umm Zafar, the tall black lady, at holding the curtain of the Kaaba. So this hadith mentions that people at the time were aware of this condition, epilepsy. Okay. So actually, the, the Sahaba brought this lady uh, to the Prophet ﷺ. So the, again, the, the question would be, if people are aware of epilepsy, then why did they not, uh, why did the Quraysh not say that the Prophet ﷺ has epilepsy and uh, this thing that he's reciting during epilepsy is, not, is nothing but you know, a, a fig figment of his imagination and a, a product of his epileptic fit? Okay, this is a very good video. Let me just share it with you. on. Um, this is the last video I have. Two videos. Left. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. There's one more. Um, where is this? Where's that lady you've gone here? This is um, yes. a, a neurologist. But probably all of you know that your memory for what happens during a seizure is likely to be lost. So you won't remember what people said to you or what you actually did during a seizure. Seizures can also affect your memory for what happens just after you come out of the event. This is referred to as the postictal period. And often you might be able to respond by um, following commands or answering questions, but later you won't be able to, to remember um, those events. There are other types of effects that seizures can have on memory as well, and they vary from person to person. For example, I had one patient tell me that after a big seizure, he completely forgot the previous day. And the way he knew that he had forgotten it was he had been involved in his brother's wedding and he had no memory for that event. That's very unusual. In addition to full-blown seizures, epileptic discharges, which can be seen on the EEG, can also have an effect on memory. 
If these discharges are going on, our research has indicated that the storage of memory over the longer term is affected. So people have trouble remembering things that they did a week later or two weeks later because of these discharges. The question about whether medication affects your memory is a complex one. Some of our research has indicated... Okay, and then I'll... So this is a patient having epileptic fit. Just to... Um, so anybody who has epilepsy, please, uh, I think I would advise not to watch this. Why is it not playing? Sorry, one second. Uh, <laughs> You have to get a geezer in his pants. <laughs> There's no other. No. Subhanallah. So that was a patient suffering an epileptic um, seizure. Okay, go back. <clears throat> Okay, um, full screen. Okay, so I've now presented, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, scientific psychopathology, neurobiology about schizophrenia, epilepsy. Okay, now let's examine um, the psychological profile of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Okay, so just keep in mind all the information we've we've uh, discussed and we've shared and we've observed. So Michael H. Hart. Um, I'm sure most of you will know, he published a book uh, titled The Hundred, a ranking of the most influential people in history. And who did he rank as number one? None other than the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And what did he say? He said, my choice of Muhammad Sallallahu to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers, and it may be questioned by others. But he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and the secular level. So my question for those who claim that the Prophet ﷺ had an untreated mental illness, not a treated mental illness, an untreated mental illness for more than 23 years, how did he achieve the success both on a secular and a religious level as, uh, as uh, stated by a non-Muslim? That's a question. Now, this is a, a hadith, um, but I just want to mention uh, this is uh, so the Prophet ﷺ, he wrote a letter to Heraclius, who was one of the emperors of the Byzantine Empire. And Abu Sufyan at the time, he was a non Muslim. So he, he was interested to find out about the Prophet. ﷺ. And I just want to uh, mention so at this, at, at the time, because of stigma, etc., if, if the Prophet ﷺ had a mental illness, would somebody like Heraclius, uh, an emperor, make this statement about the Prophet? ﷺ? And I'll read it because I think it's very important to mention this. So he says, I asked you, so he's talking now to Abu Sufyan. I asked you about the, his family and your reply was that he belonged to a very noble family. The fact is that all messengers of Allah come from the noble families amongst their respective peoples. I questioned you whether anybody else amongst you claimed such a thing, i.e. prophethood. Your reply was in the negative. Had the answer been in the affirmative, I would have thought that this man, 
i.e. the Prophet, was following the previous man's statements. Then I asked you whether any one of his ancestors was a king. Your reply was in the negative. Had it been in the affirmative, I would have thought that this man wished to regain his ancestral kingdom. I further asked whether he was ever accused of telling lies before he said what he is now saying. And your reply, remember this is Abu Sufyan at the time he was not Muslim, was in the negative. I therefore came to the conclusion that he would not refrain from lying to people and then all and then tell lies about Allah. So Heraclius is saying, if the Prophet ﷺ never told lies before, why would he now tell lies uh, that he is a messenger of Allah? I then asked you whether the rich or poor follow him, and you replied that it is the poor. In fact, all the messengers have been followed by this very class of people. Then I asked you whether his followers were increasing or decreasing, and your reply was that they were increasing. And this is the characteristic of true faith, until it is complete in all respects. I further asked you whether there was anybody who, after embracing his religion, became displeased and discarded it. Your reply was in the negative. And in fact, this is the sign of true faith when its delight enters the heart and blends completely in them. I asked you whether he has ever betrayed. You replied in the negative. And likewise, messengers never betray. Then I asked you what he ordered you to do. You replied that he ordered you to worship Allah alone and not worship anything along with him. And that he forbade you from worshipping idols. And that he also ordered you to pray, to speak the truth and to be chaste. If what you have said is true, he will very soon occupy this territory beneath my feet. I knew it from uh, my readings of scripture, scriptures that he was going to appear. But I did not know that he would be from you. And if I could reach him for sure, then I would go immediately to meet him. And if I were with him, I would certainly wash his feet. So this is testimony about the character of the Prophet ﷺ by somebody who's not a Muslim at the time he was alive. I let people think about that. Okay, and this so I'm going these uh, haven't got many slides left, but I'm just going to go through the uh, this what people said about the Prophet ﷺ, non-Muslims, because people might accuse us of, because we're Muslim we're going to be biased. So the woman, woman's right activist Annie Besant, she wrote in the book The Life and Teachings of Muhammad Sallallahu It is impossible for anyone who studies the life and character of the great prophet of Arabia, who knows how he taught and how he lived, to feel anything but reverence for that mighty prophet, one of the great messengers of the Supreme. And although in what I put to you I shall say many things which may be familiar to many, yet I myself feel whenever I reread them a new way of admiration a new sense of reverence for that mighty Arabian teacher, mm-hmm. subhanAllah. Okay, now um, I'm going to address the physical effects of wahi revelation of the Prophet Sallallahu So we do know that when the Prophet Sallallahu used to re- receive revelation, um, it, it was not always the same. There were different modes of revelation, okay? So sometimes the mode of revelation t- changed from time to time. So sometimes Jibreel, alayhi salam, the angel, appeared in his original form. And I believe it was two or three times. Uh, and at the other times, he appeared in the form of a man. Okay, So in a hadith uh, narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, Verily I saw the Prophet sallam being inspired divinely on a very cold day and noticed the sweat dropping from his forehead. Does that sound like somebody with a psychotic illness? So she mentioned that he was sweating on a cold day. Okay, The Prophet sallam's face was red and he kept on breathing heavily for a while. And then he was relieved. In Bukhari, hadith number 4602. Okay. In Bukhari and Muslim, there's another hadith that Aisha radiallahu anha, she reported, Al-Harith ibn Hisham, may Allah be pleased with him, asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi O Messenger of Allah, how does the revelation come to you? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, sometimes it comes to me like the ringing of a bell, and that is the hardest for me. When it leaves me, I remember what it has said, and sometimes the angel appears to me in the shape of a man, he talks to me and I understand what he says. Aisha radiallahu anha said, I saw him when the revelation was descending upon him on a very cold day. When it had left him, his forehead was dripping with sweat. So this is a description of one of the ways that the Prophet ﷺ received revelation. Ubada ibn Samit radiallahu anhu, he reported, when the message of Allah sallallahu received revelation, he felt distressed and the color of his face changed. So we know that it was a very heavy experience for the Prophet ﷺ. Okay, why, why, why was it a heavy experience? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the Qur'an is a magnificent um, 
a miracle. So it's not something easy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in surah number 73, in sanulqi we are going to send down to you a weighty discourse. Al Hassan and Qatada, they both said the actions with it. So they were given, like, this is now tafsir from Ibn Kathir, okay, about this ayah. So it has also been said that it means it will be very heavy at the time of its revelation due to its magnificence. This is similar to what Zayd bin Thabit said. He said, The Messenger of Allah وسلم, received some revelation while his thigh was on top of my thigh, and my thigh was almost crushed uh, due to it. So Allah, uh, so the thigh of the Prophet وسلم, it was on top of uh, Zayd and it crushed him, like it, yani it became heavy. Imam Ahmed, he recorded from Abdullah ibn Amr, and he said, I asked the Prophet, وسلم, uh, Do you feel anything when revelation comes to you? And he replied, I hear a ringing and then I remain quiet when that occurs. There has not been a single time that revelation has come to me except that I thought that my soul was about to be taken. Uh, so the only Imam Ahmed reported this. So again, evidence that it was a very taxing experience. Imam Ahmed recorded from Aisha radiallahu anha that she said, If the Messenger of Allah received any revelation while he was on his riding animal, it would begin moving its jiran intensely. intensely. The jiran is basically the bottom of the neck. Ibn Jarir chose the interpretation that the revelation is heavy in both ways simultaneously. This is Abdurrahman bin Zayd bin Aslam. He said, just as it is heavy in this dunya, in the world, it will also be heavy on the day of judgment in the scales. Okay. I've already showed you that video of uh, somebody with epileptic fit. So, what, so my explanation for these uh, hadith that mention about the Prophet ﷺ sweating on a cold day, having you know, his, the color in, in his face changing, the, the tone in his thigh uh, increasing, is basically a normal stress reaction. It's a physiological response to stress. The Quran mentions, there's evidence from the Quran that revelation is heavy. Uh, Allah SWT in, in another uh, surah mentions that if we had revealed the Quran on mountains, the mountains would have been kind of uh, smashed to pieces. That's how heavy the Quran is. So when somebody goes, and I'm sure all of you have experienced like an acute stress response. I myself will give you an example. Um, when I was in Manchester, uh, I used to go to a masjid uh, and for Fajr, the imam was not there. So they pushed me forward to pray and I was, you know, I felt a lot of stress. And subhanAllah, during the time, I never experienced this before. I had like palpitations because I felt like under pressure that I needed to pray correctly. All of the uh, jama'a behind me, their salah was dependent on me. Uh, I was uh, sweating profusely. Uh, my heart was beating. I had trouble breathing. So this, you know, this is an acute stress response, and this is well known within medicine. Uh, uh, and what happens? So basically, the, uh, when a body experiences stress, you have something called the sympathetic uh, pathway. Okay, so the hypothalamus, which is in the brain, it uh, activates the adrenal medulla. The adrenal med uh, medulla, controlled by the uh, autonomic nervous system, releases adrenaline and noradrenaline into the bloodstream, okay? So there's the adrenal medulla. And, and then this prepares the body for fight or flight. And so this, uh, these hormones, adrenaline, noradrenaline, they reinforce uh, the sympathetic activation. And similarly, you've got something called the pituitary adrenal system. I'm not going to go too much into it, but it releases lots of hormones, which, which changes uh, the body, okay? Um, so here, this is a diagrammatic representation. So the brain releases endorphins. The hearing becomes more acute. So you remember one of the hadith mentions that the Prophet he, he could hear like ringing. So this can be very easily explained uh, by the hypersensitive uh, auditory processing system, the ear. The hearing becomes more acute, okay? Um, the bronchi dilate, so your, your breathing uh, gets heavier, which again, one of the hadith mentions that he was breathing heavy. Uh, perspiration, so you start sweating. The spleen produces more red blood cells, okay? The adrenal gland, I already mentioned, re releases adrenaline and gets you ready for the fight and flight response. Okay, the heart rate increases, so you start having palpitations. The pupils dilate. So all of these physiological um, responses are normal. And I believe, I, I mean, this is my hypothesis. Obviously, um, I haven't discussed this with uh, any uh, ulema, but I think this can explain, instead of people claiming, oh, he is having an epileptic fit, I think it's very easy to explain that this is a, a normal stressful uh, stress response. Okay. Now, uh, did, was the Prophet ﷺ delusional? So, like I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we already know that many prophets came and they were given miracles, okay? So now let's look at, examine briefly the... the there was actually one of the brothers uh, asked a question about this. 
um, about do we have information about the childhood of uh, the Prophet So here, um, this is from Ibn Ishaq. Okay, um, so here it mentions that my father Umar ibn Al Khattab. So this is this is Umar uh, Abdullah ibn Umar. He said one day we were sitting in the company of Allah's messen uh, messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallam, when they appeared before as a man dressed in pure white clothes, his hair extraordinary black. There were no signs of travel on him. None amongst us recognized him. Okay, so then there's more description. And then what happens is basically, further on it mentions that um, he asked Umar, uh, the Prophet ﷺ asked Umar, do you know who the inquirer was, uh, the person who came and asked? And I replied, Allah and his messenger knows best. The Prophet ﷺ said he was Jibreel, the angel. He came to you in order to instruct you in matters of religion. So this is evidence, and this is, sorry, in Sahih Muslim. This is evidence that uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, and the Sahaba saw Jibreel in human form. So it's it's impossible for, like if I'm psychotic and I have a delusion, say now I'm seeing aliens uh, coming you know, into my room, it's impossible for the rest of you to see them as well uh, because then it would be a shared delusion. There is actually a condition called shared psychotic disorder where two people can have the same psychotic experience, but it's very rare. Definitely not how many 300 uh, Sahaba bef uh, can in the early stages and then 100,000 uh, sahaba, you know, they, it's impossible for them to have the same delusion. So, the pe more than one person witnessed Jibreel in human form. Okay, um, again, this mentions uh, when the Prophet ﷺ was a child, so he had miraculous uh, experiences which were witnessed by people. So, when he was with, with Halima, his wet nurse, um, she mentioned uh, in again, is Ibn Ishaq that um, some months after our return. He, so Prophet Muhammad and his brother were with our lambs behind the tents. When his brother came running and said to us, two men clothed in white seized that Qureshi brother of mine. So this was Muhammad And threw him down and opened his belly and are string, uh, stringing it up. We ran towards him and found him standing up with a livid face. We took hold of him and asked what the matter was. He said, two men in white raiment came and threw me down and opened up my belly and searched there in for I know not what. So we took him back to our tent. So here we have a witness, eyewitness of the famous incident where the two angels came and opened up the, the chest of the Prophet and washed his heart and removed um, you know, the, the dark spots. Um, again, here there's more, more descriptions about this. I'm not going to go too much into it. I'm happy to share it. But there's multiple references. Um, this one actually I will read. So when the Prophet was still a young boy, he was with his uncle Abu Talib. Ibn Ishaq gives one particular account which is related uh, to the idea of the coming prophet attributed to a monk called Bahira. So this was a Christian monk. According to the narration, to make it brief, the Prophet ﷺ joined his uncle Abu Talib on a trade journey. When the caravan reached Busra in Syria, there was a monk there in his cell by the name of Bahira who was well versed with uh, the knowledge of uh, the Christians. While he was in his cell, he saw the Apostle of Allah ﷺ in the caravan when they approached with a cloud overshadowing, overshadowing him. So people saw that when the Prophet was walking, a cloud was basically following him. Bahira invited them for food. Muhammad being the youngest, stayed with the baggage under the tree. Bahira encouraged the people to bring the boy along, interrogated him, found the seal of the prophethood on his back. He urged Abu Talib to protect the boy from the Jews, who will be his cruelest foes. Ibn Ishaq also adds that some of them even intended to assassinate the boy while he was still in Busra, but Bahira prevented them from doing so. So these are signs that of his truthfulness and that uh, he was a, a, a prophet uh, of Allah. Uh, in this, uh, it mentions again that the Prophet ﷺ, um, was basically uh, grew up uh, to be the finest of people in manliness, the best in character, the most noble in lineage, the best neighbor, the most kind, truthful, reliable, furthest removed from filthiness and corrupt moral uh, and, and corrupt morale through loftiness and nobility so that he was known among his people as the trustworthy because of the good qualities which Allah had implanted in him. Somebody who has a mental illness which is untreated and a severe mental illness would not be described in such a way. Okay. Um, again, this is about Bahira, so I'm not going to go through that. Um, okay. So miracles. What What is the proof that the Prophet ﷺ was uh, telling the truth and he was not uh, delusional or psychotic. I'm just going to go through quickly and then we'll finish. So what is a miracle? A definition of a miracle is something extraordinary and welcome event that is not explicable by natural 
or scientific laws and is therefore attributed to a divine agency. What's interesting is within psychiatry, we actually have a diagnostic classification, something called medically unexplained or somatoform disorders. So something called conversion disorder. So I've seen patients who, who've gone blind, uh, can't see. We do all the tests for them, do an MRI scan, do a neurological examination, and we cannot find any cause, okay? And so within psychiatry, we, we, define, we diagnose this person as conversion disorder, hypothesizing that maybe had some real uh, psychological distress and the body shut down uh, because um, they couldn't handle the stress. So although he, the eyes doesn't have any physical uh, issue, but psychologically, he, that person's gone blind, okay? So the point is that science doesn't explain everything. Even within uh, diagnostic classifications, there are many disorders that we cannot explain from a, a medical or scientific perspective. So the biggest uh, miracle uh, that the Prophet ﷺ brought is the Qur'an. Uh, and, and why is that? Because the, the Qur'an can be proven from multiple perspectives, uh, from its historical precision, from its linguistic perfection, to the many prophecies it accurately, accurately foretold. Even the Qur'an itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Isra that we will not believe you until you bring for us a gushing spring from the earth, a garden of date trees and grapes with a river flowing through it, uh, cause a piece of the sky to fall on us as you claim, or until you bring Allah and the angels face to face before us, or that you will have a house that is decorated with gold, or you bring a ladder that goes into the sky. No, we will not believe you. You're rising through the sky. We will only be convinced if you will bring down to us a book that we can read. Say, glory to my Lord, I am just a human being sent as a messenger. Subhanallah. And uh, in Surah number uh, Surah Isra, verse 88, the Quran basically presents a challenge to mankind to produce something like it. And just remember when I was talking about uh, you know, schizophrenic patients who have formal thought disorder and their writing is all over the place and they're incoherent. And then look at this. So this challenge has lasted over 14 centuries, uncontested. So this is why the Qur'an is the greatest miracle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says, if mankind and the jinn gathered in order to produce the like of this Qur'an, they could not produce the like of it, even if they were to uh, uh, assist each other. Okay. So Imam Qurtubi, he said that the inimitability of the Qur'an is due to its precise language, the stylistics, comprehensiveness, unsurpassed just laws, its account of historical events, it's free from any kind of contradiction. It's prophecies fulfilled. It's masterly meets the human needs and impacts human feelings effectively. Is that something that could be produced with somebody with a severe mental illness which is untreated? I don't think so. Okay. Now, these are testimonies by non-Muslims. Um, I'll just go through briefly some of them. Okay. So, um, Sedilot was one of the most famous Orientalists. Orientalists are traditionally against Islam of France, and he stated the following in his book called General History of Arabs. He said that the Qur'an is a respectable book. It informed people about the rights of Allah and taught them what creatures should expect from them, from the Creator and the relationships between the, creator, the creatures and the Creator. The Qur'an contains all of the principles of ethics and philosophy, virtue and disgrace, good and bad, the real nature of things in short. Every issue is mentioned in the Qur'an, so it's very comprehensive. Okay. The Qur'an leads man to economy and justice. It protects man from deviation. It takes man out of darkness of his weaknesses and elevates him to the light of ethical highness. Gaston Carré, one of the famous Orientalists of France, wrote, The Qur'an contains the foundations that the world... Why didn't you finish that guy's quote? Sorry? Why didn't you finish the quote? Oh, you, uh, at the bottom. Okay, sorry. Uh, Those who call Islam a barbarous religion are people who are deprived of consciousness because they close their eyes to the clear and lucid verses of the Qur'an, and they do not study how the Qur'an eliminated the disgraceful acts that lasted for centuries. Very powerful statement. Very powerful. Yeah, no, I forgot it. Okay. Gaston Kerr, the Qur'an contains the foundations that the world civilization is based on. We can say that this civilization came into existence out of the confirmation of the principles introduced by Islam. Okay, the Qur'an is a book of ethics full of wisdom. Alexis Louva, Louvazon, I'm sorry, my French is very bad. He's a French philosopher. What did he say? He said that the Quran revealed to Muhammad وسلم, for the guidance of humanity is a bright book full of wisdom. There is no doubt that Muhammad وسلم, is a real prophet sent by cre the Creator who controls the destiny of the world. Hazrat or Prophet Muhammad وسلم, left such a book that it is a rare example of rhetoric and the holy book of ethics. 
That is, there's no problem among the problems that are settled by the help of scientific discoveries or science and knowledge that contradicts the principles of Islam. Unlike our efforts that we exert in order to harmonize our Christianity with natural laws, there is full harmony between the Quran and its uh, natural laws. Subhanallah. There's instructions on natural laws. Instructions, yeah, I couldn't see it. There's a thing there. Thank you. Um, Dr. Maurice, he's a famous Orientalist, uh, an expert on Arabic literature and a translator of the Quran. What did he say? He said, what is the Quran? It is a miracle of rhetoric and fluency. Rhetoric and fluency. The virtue of the Quran that makes 350 million Muslims feel proud. Obviously now, mashallah, we have more than 2 billion Muslims. Um, is the fact that it is the best heavenly book in terms of expressing every meaning. No, we can move further. The Quran is the best book that is granted to man by the eternal help of the nature. The statements of the Quran are superior to the statements of the Greek philosophy from the point of view of the welfare of man. The Quran is full of praising and thanking the creator of the world and the sky. Every word of the Quran is embedded in the majesty of the supreme being who created everything and who leads and guides everything based on their talents. The Quran is a book of literature for the people of literature. The Quran is a treasure of words for linguists. The Quran is a resource of harmony for poets. The book is also an encyclopedia of legal decrees. Uh, on a side note, um, in Harvard, they have put one of the Quran, Quranic ayats in, the, in their law school because of the justice that, is, uh, that the Quran uh, uh, instructs us. None of the books sent from the time of David to the period of John Talmus could compete with the verses of the Quran successfully. Therefore, the more the high classes of Muslims are enlightened to comprehend the realities of life, the more they become interested in the Quran and the more they show respect to the Quran. The respect of Muslims toward the Quran continually increases. This is a miracle. Muslim authors decorate their writings by quoting the verses of the Quran and they are inspired by those verses. The more Muslims increase their education and manners, the more they base their ideas on the Quran. Subhanallah. Dr. Steingas, who is the author of the English Arabic and Arabic English Dictionaries, what did he say? The creed and ethics of the Quran is a perfect combination of the principles that bring about guidance of people and success in life. A work, then, which calls forth so powerful and seemingly incompatible emotions even in the distant reader, distant as to time, and still more so as mental development, a work, a work which not only conquers the repugnance which he may begin its perusal, but changes this adverse feeling into astonishment and admiration. Such a work must be wonderful production, indeed, and a problem of the highest interest to every thoughtful observer of the destinies of mankind. Edward Gibbon, from the Atlantic to the Ganges, the Quran is acknowledged as the fundamental code of civil and criminal jurisprudence. There is no difference between a mighty king and a poor person in the eye of the Quran. There exists such a jurisprudence based on those principles that it has no equivalence in the world. It has no equivalence in the world. Dr. Gustave Libon. Sorry, I can't see that. Let me, uh, Hamza, can you read that? Are you there? Take two. Well, put it back, put it back, put it back. I can't see it. It's blocked. No, you read it. Yeah, I was muted. One second. Islam is distinguished from the other religions in the world in that the Quran teaches the purest and cleanest oneness. Tawheed. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Okay. Uh, Quran and et ethics. Mr. Arnold, he says, the lessons we learn from the Old Testament and the New Testament through Jews order us to treat creatures with respect and love. However, apart from giving people a perfect education, the Quran teaches people to be ethical, generous, philanthropic, brave and courageous and to love all Muslims. Hindu. So this is the testimony from a Hindu guru called Baba Nanak. What did he say? He said that the real book of belief and the book that satisfies the mind is only the Quran. This is very pertinent to our discussion today. Um, the following is stated in the popular encyclopedia. Uh, can you read that, Hamza? Because again, it's blocked at the bottom. According to Arabic, the Quran is extremely fluent. In fact, the literal beauty of the Quran is unique. Besides, the orders of the Quran are so reasonable and logical that if people study them carefully, they will understand that those orders will provide a clean and chaste life. Okay. okay, so that was the Quran. Uh, what about the moon splitting? For anybody um, who wants to delve into this deeper, Sheikh Uthman ibn Farooq, mashallah, Allah mubarak, he's done a brilliant uh, video. I would really highly recommend people, um, those who are skeptical, uh, atheists, agnostics, to, uh, to really um, listen to this. So, 
what basically the context was, the Quraysh, they said they were saying to the Prophet ﷺ, prove that you are a messenger of Allah. So he said, okay, how can I prove that I'm a messenger of God? They said, okay, if you're telling the truth, split the moon. Subhanallah. So uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, he made dua and the moon split and then it kind of joined together. And this is mentioned in, um, obviously, uh, in the Quran, but also in Sahih Bukhari. There's mutawatir hadith where there was eyewitnesses. Um, uh, the, uh, to this fact not only that um so people can say oh um you're muslim and this is these are muslims so they're obviously going to make it up that they saw that the, the moon was split we actually have uh, recorded uh, information from eight from eight uh Quraysh, enemies of islam including abu jahl uh, and walid ibn mughira who actually witnessed uh, the the splitting of the moon um and this is documented and subhanallah okay so you can say okay these people were in mecca uh, they maybe they were all in on it. We have more. We have more evidence. We had there were caravans that were coming back from Yemen, coming back from Syria, and when they got back to Mecca, the same enemies of Islam, like Walid ibn Mughira and Abu Jahl, they asked the caravan, uh, the people from the caravans, "Did you see anything strange? Did you see the the moon split?" And Subhanallah, they said, "Yes, we witnessed the the splitting of the moon." So this these were people who were not in the same geographical location. They were actually uh, on the outskirts of Arabia, and they witnessed this. We can go further, and this is, subhanAllah, this is amazing. There was actually, uh, in the British uh, library, there's a manuscript, an Indian manuscript, because there was a king in Kerala who actually witnessed this as well. So obviously, um, geographically, uh, for example, in North America, uh, in uh, obviously there was no USA at that time, North America, um, you, they wouldn't have witnessed, uh, the nighttime was different, right? So, and also on the east, it was really dark. So the area that would you would expect people to witness this miracle is, around, is the subcontinent. So this Indian king, he actually witnessed it. And then he came into contact with um, some uh, merchants from Arabia. And he, he told them, look, I witnessed this. Uh, it, did this happen? And they said, subhanAllah, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he, he, he did this miracle. And later on, this same Indian king, he, he met the Prophet ﷺ and he became Muslim. And then he built the first uh, masjid. Uh, in in India and Sheikh Uthman he actually contacted the British Library and he got the, he they confirmed the India section confirmed the manuscript and then he he contacted India uh, a, a company that's digitalizing all of their manuscripts and they confirmed uh, again that there are multiple reports of uh, this Indian king witnessing the splitting of the moon so if if somebody is delusional if somebody is psychotic how is it possible for them to split the moon and be witnessed by so many different people. Um, the, the the other thing Sheikh Uthman also mentions, he said that NASA has many theories about um, like how the moon came into existence, and one of the theories is that basically it crashed, uh, it merged into another planet and then split. And he showed pictures from NASA's website that some ridges on the moon, and it, they, I mean NASA do, don't commit that uh, to this uh, hypothesis, but they say that it cannot be excluded that you know the moon kind of at, at one point split and then merged. Subhanallah. So people are free to go and check check that out. This is a miracle which can't be explained. Okay, um, the tree that cried. This Bro, can I just stop because we're going too far now? Sorry, go too fast. Go too far. We're, we've we've the job was. Okay. Okay, we don't okay. need to prove the truthfulness now. We're just okay, dismissing fine. the false claim. That's fine. I I'll just mention this is the last slide. Is that okay? Yeah, go on. Okay, so this is um. The miracle of water flowing from the Prophet's hand. So on the day of Hudaybiyah, the people became thirsty. After completing the wudu, they, they rushed to the Prophet and they said, "What's the?" Uh, he asked, what's the matter with them? Uh, they replied that they had no water for wudu, uh, for making ablution or drinking, except a small pot of water, which clearly wasn't enough for them. So he then placed his hand into the pot of water and the water started to flow from the ends of his fingers like a spring. Everyone drank and performed ablution that day. This is in Bukhari, okay? Um... And so this is, uh, again, this is something that witnessed by multiple people. Uh, so somebody who's psychotic, who's delusional, would not be able to do that. And that is my end of my presentation. Beautiful presentation, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Um, yeah, I mean, I know what question I'm going to ask now when this comes up, you know that. First question I will ask now, after your talk, is when someone says to me like, oh, maybe he was crazy or delusional, 
Awesome. Which mental illness would uh, result in these uh, the claim of seeing an angel talking to them? Which which, which uh, mental illnesses are you referring to? So I'll basically I'll show their ignorance and they don't understand what they are. Then I'll say, and these mental illnesses, what are the symptoms? What would you expect to see in someone suffering from this type? Oh, I'll destroy them with this, now, mashallah. So for me, that was fantastic. Yeah, and Hamza, the other thing I before that I would actually say to them, okay, do you know uh, uh, people who don't have a mental illness? Do they experience hallucinations? Do they have these yeah. unusual experiences? Uh, yes, they're called psychotic-like experiences, and they are not uh, pathological. They're not a sign of a mental illness, and up to thirty percent of the population experience these. So you claiming yeah, that? But, uh, yeah, but I feel the problem with that. Yeah, is you're giving an, an, an excuse of a hallucination. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm just saying that's an extra thing to mention. I know. I, I don't think you need to. Yeah. Because for me, as soon as you start saying that, well, he doesn't need to be mentally ill to have an hallucination. Yeah. So even if he's got no symptoms of mental illness, he could still be hallucinating. I mean, that's no, not expect twenty-three years no, of revelation. No, no. What what I was saying is that hallucination does not equal mental illness. No, that's the point. Yeah. Because you you get you're giving them a get out of jail free card because they're saying, yeah. well, I'm not saying he's mentally ill. No, I'm not saying he's mentally ill. You, and they're not saying it's me. You do know you can hallucinate and not be mentally ill. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, maybe that's what happened. He was hallucinating, but I'm not saying he was mentally ill. That's why he didn't have any symptom. Do you understand the point? Is that, yeah, I don't yeah. think there's any need to even bring that up personally. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can say that, uh, okay, what's uh, mental illness? What symptoms do you have? <coughs> and how, and wh what uh, diagnostic criteria did those symptoms meet? Okay. And how long were the symptoms for? And then you can talk about the studies that looked at patients who have untreated mental illness. That's the point. That's the other good point. So what yeah. happens with people who are mentally ill who were not treated? And if they say, oh, they whatever happened, they say, right. Were people treated with mental illness back in the 6th, 7th, 7th century? Were they diagnosed in that way? No. So they weren't treated, right? So we should see some kind of deterioration in them. Exactly. No, no, I've, I've learned so much from them. The reason I did this so I could learn this information. And I'll okay. utilize this information now. Um, someone said something in the chat earlier, Jenna Dean. She said, Is that she or he? I don't know. Jenna. Is Jenna, Jenna male or female? They're known. Jenna. G A E N A. Anyway, you can only, only you can tell Jenna. Gina. Jenna. Was, um, was Moses accused of being mentally ill? Now, the thing, what you've got to understand, we said this from the very beginning. Christians don't make this claim to us. It's not yeah. Christians who are making this claim. It's atheists. Yeah. And so atheists would say that Moses suffered from mental illness. He thought he was talking to God in the yeah. bush. Yeah. yeah. So uh, she's female. Freebird says Jenna Dean is female. Okay. So, yeah. So the question, I understood why, why the question came up. But to be honest with you, Christians, although they do present double standards continuously, I've yeah. never had a Christian really say this. Christian claim is what's going to be dealt with another time is yeah. that he's um, deceived by the devil. devil, a devil pretending to be an angel, which will be a yeah. different show. Yeah. yeah. And sorry, I, I don't want to cut you because I didn't want to go to him telling the truth at that point. I, it was nice you put a few touches, but we didn't need to go deep into that. Yeah, that's because, fine. That's fine. Because we're, we're doing deductive logic. So we're just removing yes. each one at a time. Yeah. No, well, the, the, I, I have the, to warn you that some of that information you're giving today is going in a book, all right? Just so you know. No problem. No problem. The, the only reason I wanted to mention that is because, you know, like a delusion is defined as a false belief contrary to evidence, okay? That's not changeable. So I mentioned those hadith at the end and narrations because that is evidence which doesn't justify uh, the description of a delusion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, how do we do questions and answers? I don't want this to go on all night. And I know what people are like. Um, so there's two ways we can do it. <sighs> do, this do, really you want, do you want to do the um, the super chats? That's what I was going to say. They could do the super chat so I can distinguish the question. Or I can put the link out. But I think putting the link out is going to go long. Put, put the link out, bro. Because I think this is like, uh, honestly, I, I was going to mention. Yeah, but I don't, I don't want someone coming out saying, oh, I've suffered for this. Uh, this is this, just so you understand, people. Yeah. This, I mean, we may do a stream in the future with the Q and A for the doctor with regards to different types of mental illness, what you've suffered with, or your niece has got this or whatever. This stream is not about that. So, if you come on the stream, your question is something to do 
with what's been spoken about, a claim yeah. from Hamza Salam and this and the other. Don't start telling us about your personal history or people you know and, and things like that because we get it. We've, we've done that. We've seen the research. That's the only thing. That's the first thing. I've got a question. So I'll kick off the questions. Has there been any leaders in history, like, because I've heard this claim that Hitler was crazy and other people have been crazy, Napoleon was crazy, and yet they still managed great accomplishments and things like that. Now, let me ask a question for you, I'll shake your head first. <laughs> so um, people have said these people suffered from mental illness. So, for example, Hitler suffered from mental illness and Napoleon Bonaparte suffered from mental illness and such. And probably George Bush. But the point is this, right? Um, as a psychiatrist, would you say they did? Or do you think it would was more of a kind of, um, what's the word? What would you use for someone like a sociopath or psychopath? Yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, Antisocial personality. Yeah, yeah. It's like that. So how, how would you um, address that? Because people say that. Because I used to, to be honest with you, this, you know, I'm not going to lie, this was my weakest kind of yeah. breakdown of yeah. – I, I say, oh, why would people follow a crazy person? And then they say, well, people followed Hitler, people followed this, people followed that. So I usually use a weak kind of um, argument. Yeah. So how would you respond to somebody who makes that comparison that uh, somebody of uh, in the past, in history, um, has managed to motivate people, get them to follow them and such, and yet they've been diagnosed mentally ill? Um, it's a brilliant question. I, I, I would address it in a couple of ways. Firstly... Um, even if you make that claim, uh, is Hitler? Is anybody following Hitler now? How many people are following Hitler? Did Hitler produce a, a miracle in terms of a written piece of work? Uh, no. Okay. So there's no, no nothing. I would argue Mein Kampf. Carry on. Mein Kampf. Okay. But um, my my response would be that um, I need to like obviously look, study the biography of Hitler in more detail if I was to do a proper examination. But from my uh, my research, limited research. Uh, he didn't experience hallucinations that I'm aware of, or that uh, he didn't. Some people would say he was deluded about believing in the area, superiority of the Aryan race, but then people have evil beliefs. It doesn't justify that being a delusion. Okay, um, I, if I was to hypothesize, I would say he had, he had an antisocial personality, um, and so within the diagnostic classification, we have personality disorders. It used to be called sociopath or psychopath. So these serial killers, like Jeffrey Dahmer, for example, um, these people. They have a lack of empathy. They, they're very callous. And these are personality traits that make them do evil things. But that doesn't um, translate to like, you know, a severe mental illness like, you know, psychosis. Some of them might be bipolar. Very famous people have been bipolar and that increases their creativity. A lot of artists and musicians, um, they are bipolar. So when they're in the hypermanic phase, they'll be able to, you know, be more creative. Uh, but people like Stalin and um, Hitler, I think they just had antisocial personalities. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Right. Um, I don't want to put this link out. I really, really don't. I'm going to, just so you're going to ask a question in the chat. You're going to have to super chat. It doesn't matter if you just put one dollar or whatever, or ten rupee. It's just the fact that it highlights your question. And it's got to be on the topic, man. <laughs> I've seen some of the comments throughout this conversation. I'm just like, what the hell are you guys watching? I can't see the comments. Are the comments. Uh, are you... Why can't you see the comments? I don't know. It's a blank screen for me. No, but make your picture smaller. Okay. You see the uh, the thing at the bottom square? The bottom? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. There you go. You've been going the whole stream like that, and that's why you can see all your videos at the bottom and all that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, okay. We really don't want to put this link out. Hamza, you know, subhanAllah, I think we should um, thank Allah that this is something that's not been done before. I've not come across like something that's done in this format. I've seen some, yeah, no, no, I and I think, um, inshallah, if people can share this because a lot of people are ill informed about mental illness and they don't know how to, um, you know, uh, respond to the allegations that people make. And to be honest, most of, the, most of the allegations I've seen have been by ex Muslims who have an issue, an emotional issue with Islam, and then they start attacking the, the character of the Prophet, you know. Um, I've seen them, yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends whether if the ex Muslim became a Christian. Yeah, then they won't. They, yes, they will, they, they, they will bang on about deception. If they, if the ex Muslim became an atheist, yes, then they, to be honest with you, they, they struggle because you know, someone comes and says, I am he's been Muslim and all that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I just basically say to them, So, did the prophets or some lie? Was it crazy or deceit? Yeah. They're like, What? Well, you don't want to tell the truth. So, which one was it? 
the other thing, sorry, you said you learned two things. The other thing about epilepsy, the fact that the patients don't ha have. Oh, any yes, they don't recall. Yeah, recall, yeah. Uh, Uh, could someone recognize an intelligent sociopath? Can someone recognize an intelligent... Okay, we don't use the word sociopath anymore. We use the word antisocial. Um, yes, somebody can, but usually it's after they've com committed some uh, serious serious uh, interpersonal violence or crime. Um, so a lot of these, if you look at these serial killers, they, they have the ability to charm people. They have quite warm personalities. Um, uh, but they de they're very deceptive, um, so it's difficult, you know. Um, it just depends what kind of antisocial personality disorder the patient has. You know, I found quite funny. There was a there was a there was a, a guy who was approaching women and, and yeah. guys actually with two photos. Okay. And I think one was like a picture of a Sikh with a beard, and the other was like Charles Manson and um, you know this da the Dharma character. And but you know, all clean shaven, good looking guys. And uh, he was asking these women, which one would you trust? Oh, that guy, that guy. <laughs> they were all chosen. Uh, when they got told at the end, uh, that was like Charles Manson. They're like, what? Oh, my God. Um, so, you, that, it, it, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. SubhanAllah. So, you I can don't see, know, and, and when yeah. you read the stories of these guys, they were very charismatic people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you do know Ted Bundy, Ted Bundy is the most fam famous. Yeah, Ted Bundy, Ted Bundy was yeah. the one as well. Yeah, Ted Bundy was a lawyer, um, but he was a he's sociopath or you know psychopath that he killed so many women because they trusted him so they don't use the word sociopath and psychopath anymore no because they're very stigmatizing terms so we, we use antisocial personality disorder because okay. of the description. i got accused of being a sociopath one time how would you diagnose me i'll, I'll take my own personal diagnosis actually i i think offline as, as a psychiatrist <laughs> offline. would you say um, um what, what, how would offline. you be honest be straight I need to respect your confidentiality. We'll do it offline. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, yeah. Right. I've been accused of being a sociopath, but I've got too much empathy to be a sociopath. I don't think. I don't think so. As, I, all right. Uh, right. I'm going to remove all these other things off. This. Just, yeah, remove. You can, you can remove them off, actually. Um. So yeah. have you put have you put the link out? Does anybody want to like call it? Yeah, the the link is out. But can you get rid of all these? Um... Oh, sorry. Okay. I thought you were doing it. I can't do it for some reason. Really? But, yeah, because you added them. Okay. Oh, that's it. Somebody's in the. Can I just ask this, Hamza, can you please tell the doc, tell the doctor, ask the doctor why when I have an epileptic fit, when I see blackness, I can hear voices to wake up, and it's the people around me saying it's what explanations. It's so yeah, so there's a type of epilepsy called temporal lobe epilepsy. I don't know if that's what you have. Um, those patients can have some auditory kind of hallucinatory experiences. Um, so maybe that's what you're experiencing. It's completely normal. It's nothing to worry about. But I, I think the clue is in the question. He's saying, uh, yeah, he's saying that people around him are trying to wake him up. So obviously they're actually there. Yeah. <laughs> that's the voices. <laughs> I know it's unrelated, but he's been giving red fire engines the whole show. So, okay. Right. I'm a Muslim. Sorry, I'm Wa alaikum salam, how are you two? Salam alaikum. Alhamdulillah, good. How are you, Akhi? Uh, yeah, I'm good, thank you, alhamdulillah. So, um, I believe that mental illness is a real thing because it, it mentions it in the Quran and the Hadith. Um, so, I definitely accept that. Um, I studied psychology, though, uh, for like a few years, and I think a lot of like modern psychology is. Um, Kind of based upon assumptions I think made by people who are kind of quite far removed from reality. They kind of observe apes and stuff like that. And um, I think like there's there's not really much point in trying to um, protect the prophet peace be upon him from these like modern labels because you know you could say he's got anything like selective mutism, like how he is. on all the time and you know be sure like that could be a sign of autism so i just think a lot of modern psychology is actually garbage um i think yeah i mean it's probably you got some points but the the, the thing is that um 
la- yeah, I agree with you. La- maybe we tend to label people too much, but things like serious mental illness, like psychosis and epilepsy or neurological issues, I think that's quite easy to you know address. Um, mm. Personality traits, social communication issues, these are like neurodevelopmental problems um, in those individuals that have it. And you also have like a, a dimensional model, not a categorical um, mo- model. So people are on a dimension. Like Hamza was asking about personality. So some people are extremely narcissistic uh, to the point where it causes uh, impairment in their functioning. And then on the other end, people are slightly narcissistic, like, you know, t- like to take lots of selfies, etc. So it, it, it's kind of like that. that uh, is what uh, people describe. Uh, but you're right. They, we tend to uh, label uh, a lot. Um, but the psychological stuff, some of it's very helpful, like CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. You know, people who suffer from negative thoughts and anxiety, um, CBT is very helpful, you know. So I think, you know, it's kind of like the Quran is the best guidance for us. So I've done some streams with Gabriel Romani and we talk about, you know, like, uh, surely in the remembrance of the Quran do hearts find peace. So there's natural treatments for depression and low mood from the Quran and prophetic tradition which we should also implement. But sometimes people do require treatment with medication and other psychological therapies. Yeah, but Umar, I think you missed a point, mate, to be honest. Um, first thing is, who, who is making this claim atheists? Hmm. Yeah? These are the same people that are saying back in the day people thought it was witchcraft, now we know it was mental illness. Yeah? Hmm. So the, the people you're speaking to are already got a mindset yes. that... Things of this nature can be explained in the 21st century. Correct. Schizophrenia wasn't known the way it's known. Epilepsy wasn't known the way it's known. Um, causes and all this kind of stuff. So that's who we're addressing. Yeah. So they're saying, could schizophrenia that we know today have explained what they thought was some kind of miraculous thing? So that's what we're, de- we're dealing with. We're dealing with their diagnosis. So that's why I said, if someone says, oh, maybe he was schizophrenic, I'd say, really, what's the symptoms of schizophrenia? And then they'd have to explain to me what the symptoms of schizophrenia are. And which of these symptoms did the prophet have? Do you understand yeah. the point? Yeah, and then how would we know as well, um, Abu, that people today that have things like schizophrenia, just like that, they're not having like experiences with gin possession? And That's stuff a like different that. question. And yeah. for a potentially yeah. different show that this was the first show that he wanted to do. He wanted yeah. to do a show differentiating between true mental illness and gin possession, which for me, I was like, maybe we'll see. Um, no, that's obviously, cool, yeah, because yeah, because I, I believe that mental illness is a real thing, and the prophet peace be upon him definitely that's wasn't. That's why I was surprised by your opening statement, yeah. mate. No, you no, can't hold us. I believe as if we've just been saying mental illness isn't a thing. Yeah. And no, you've come like, to refute the idea that mental illness is a thing. And we've just described the actuality and the reality of mental illness, its symptoms yeah. and ramifications. And then you come on and go, well, actually, I think mental illness is true because the Quran speaks about it. I'm like, yeah, we know that. We're just in like nearly two two hours. Yeah, but it's just because I studied psychology and I, I feel like a lot of labels today, it's just it's pointless to try no, and no, but the, defend But the way you came on, and, as if we've just yeah. been trying to teach that mental illness is not a thing. <laughs> Okay. Well, we just had slide after slide after slide. No, 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 no. Sorry. What? Yeah. What? No. What I was doing was that I would because I was going to make the point that today a lot of I think diagnoses of mental illness are false. I wanted to start by clarifying that I believe it's a real thing because of what I was going to say after that. But no, no that, you came yeah. up to say it and then justified it with the Quran as if like we disagreed. No, that was just so you didn't misunderstand me because my point was going to be that. Um, Today, I think there's a lot of labeling of mental illness, which isn't correct. <clears throat> Ironically, we misunderstood you because you did that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, no, but I just wanted to say that Prophet Peace Upon wasn't mad. Oh, so and, yeah, alhamdulillah. Okay. Zach oh, right. Umar, thanks for coming, man. Appreciate right. it. Zach Take care. Uh, it's, it's arena night. I can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> But I didn't say his point. But I didn't. Actually, I didn't. <laughs> I, I, thought, <laughs> I didn't. Because, uh, like I said, we, we de- we, like I said, this is why the atheists say things like, yeah, they used to think the thunder was, you know, Thor yeah. in the cloud with the thunder. Oh, yeah, now yeah. we know what, what it is. So basically, yeah, we, we know that. Because I know that. I'm, I can hear the atheists saying it to me. 
yeah, maybe they didn't understand schizophrenia and mental illness back then, but now we know it now. That could be an explanation. And we're like saying, no, because we're taking your definition of schizophrenia, exactly, your exactly. symptoms of schizophrenia, your ramifications of schizophrenia, and we're, we're importing it back there. I say, okay, so this is what we should see if it's schizophrenia. Exactly, Let's exactly. have a look. Do we see that? Exactly, no? Right. Exactly. So we can dismiss exactly. schizophrenia. What else you got? Epilepsy? Okay. What's the symptom? Yeah, yeah. And you know, subhanAllah, Hamza, the, the fact that the Quran and the Hadith are preserved allows us to do that. Like we couldn't oh, do the okay. same. We couldn't do the same uh, for uh, Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, because we don't have the same uh, level of, uh, you know, evidence preserved. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I've got Naeem. What do you want? Find one. Muted. Have you got? Is, has he got his camera oh, on? Like, I don't know. He's in a shower or something. In a shower or something. <laughs> What's going on there? What is that screen? I don't know. Covered it though. Yes, name. Salam alaikum, bro. Just in case you come out of the shower. Yeah, mate. What do you want? <laughs> name. You muted, mate. You muted. You muted. I don't know if it's the name. You muted. Yeah, muted. What's there going on go. in, in, in the chat? Switch off your YouTube. That's not our name. Switch off your YouTube and then unmute yourself. There's some things kicking off in the chat. Oh, don't worry about the chat. All right. Naeem, you're muted still. Switch off your YouTube and unmute you. Yeah, so I, I, I've I really benefited from this because it's just giving me – I'm going to make them look so stupid that they're talking about something they don't have a clue about. Yes, alhamdulillah. And I enjoy that, Treme especially with atheists. Tremendous. So I'll be like, what, what's the symptoms of schizophrenia? And when they don't know, I so say, why are you diagnosing it then? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, subhanallah. 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 What's happening with name, man? Um, I don't know. I'm always been... uh, I'll try. I'll try me one more time. Name. Oh uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> Bro, ac brother, actually, Ajan here. What? Yeah. Can't hear you very well. Azan, Azan, Azan. Okay. Where are you? Which part of the world are you? Look at the private chat, please. Look at the private chat. What the hell is this? The horizontal me this? It's the Adhan, where he is. Okay. I mean, I didn't see a question. If you asked a question during the presentation, I wasn't going to read it. Um, and it's gone. Gone, 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 gone. Oh, someone's asking. So we haven't ruled out sociopaths. So could the Prophet have been a sociopath? But what, does, what would that explain? Yeah, How does that explain the revelation? Uh, you know, see, you, you can't like just grab something out of the sky because we're trying to explain an angel yes. speaking to him. And just because somebody is a sociopath doesn't explain the phenomena of hearing an angel speak to him. It's and also, and also we sociopath doesn't exist anymore. It's antisocial personality. It's what? It's antisocial personality, ASPD, antiso antisocial personality disorder. <clears throat> and I, it's I, very, I, I, yeah. Go on. And I think that's the last thing the Prophet was anti. Exactly, so, so, exactly. And the testimony from non-Muslims is enough uh, to disprove that. Hello. Ask a question to me there again. I'll, uh, without a super chat, I'll just ask it. Sorry, I, I didn't see it. Yes, Naeem. Salam alaikum. Hello, salam alaikum. <clears throat> Brother, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for uh, the wait because it, it was awesome. Sorry. So, uh, 
thank you for having me. Uh, uh, I wanted to talk to the doctor because uh, I thought it would be uh, beneficial to reap the reward when he's here. So, um, the my my question is not directly for the prophet. So, um, since uh, brother is a doctor, so I wanted to ask him this question. Uh, that yeah, is, bro, bro, bro. This is not ask the doc. No, it it is related to Islam. Please uh, bear with me, please. No, but it's not so, ask the doc. We got a doctor here, so we're gonna ask him. Right, if I hear your question and it's not, I'm just going to remove you. Okay, go on. <coughs> okay. Uh, so my question was uh, about mental health. Um, that is, anytime uh, at the time of the Prophet, uh, people needed help with anything, uh, whether it be it's any uh, political, religious, or anything matter, including health. Uh, so they used to go to the Prophet, and Prophet used to advise him. So. So my question would be that what was the uh, what was uh, their methods of teaching uh, this kind of issues i mean mental health issues for for that time and uh, for us muslim modern day muslims how we should go about uh, solving these issues i mean uh, religiously or like the modern day medicine that we have Okay. Thank you. Um, the 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 answer is simple. Uh, the, during the time of the Prophet <clears throat> you know, even in the Quran, it mentions "Basalu ahl dikri in kuntum la ta'alamun." If you don't know, go to people of knowledge. And the the ulama say that uh, knowledge there's different types of knowledge. There's obviously dunya knowledge. There's a uh, knowledge uh, knowledge from Islam as well. So um, during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, obviously he gave them instructions, and uh, there's many narrations, um, but in terms of mental well-being, uh, what we know today, subhanAllah, this is also the evidence for the truthfulness of the Prophet ﷺ, like exercise. You know, he mentioned that you should re re exercise regularly, wrestling and horse riding. We know when you exercise now that endorphins are released, which has a antidepressant effect, natural antidepressant effect, uh, appetite. Uh, the hadith about eating and avoiding overeating, um, subhanAllah, this is so it's a holistic approach to physical and mental health. Because if you overeat, you're going to be more likely to develop physical health issues like diabetes and heart disease and also psychological health problems as well. Okay, so how do we as modern Muslims, we, we integrate and this is the point of having pra practicing Muslims in the mental health field. I have worked with people like Tim Humble and um, there's a sheikh here, Sheikh Hazim Rajab, and we work collaboratively. So it, the treatment should be a holistic approach. Sometimes I've treated my shaykh with antidepressants because and they have more knowledge than me and you about the deen. They know, they know more Quran than me and you. But sometimes the neurobiology needs to be reset and medication and psychological therapy helps. So we have to have a very holistic approach. Oh, can, I ask, can, I, can I just confirm something? If someone's diagnosed with mental illness, they should take the medication, yes? Yes. yes. There you go. Okay, now you've got your answer. Take your meds. Thank you, doctor, for the answer. So just, the, the reason I ask this question because so I had a fear of uh, this modern day medicines that is associated with mental health because I've heard that these are very powerful medicines. So from that perspective, I was kind of worried that would it be safe for, but I think that uh, question have answered very clearly by the brother. And, and I have second questions. Uh, where can we follow the brother, uh, Isa? Yeah, yeah, inshallah. Where, where can we find you, uh, Abu Isa? So I'm on YouTube. I'm, I'm on uh, YouTube. I'm on Twitter uh, and recently on Instagram. So I think you have my uh, link, uh, Hamza, for YouTube. It's Dr. Uh, one of my Isa. One of the, I think the mods have been putting up throughout the whole show. If you oh. could just put it on the, on the screen so people can uh, share as a chat, whatever. So yeah, uh, best best way is uh, YouTube, my YouTube channel. So I do a lot of videos on different mental illnesses, um, and do podcasts with Gabriel Romani around mental well being, etc. And uh, I did recently did one with Hamza Zorzi also. So yeah, Jazakallah Khair, Amri. I just want to respond to something uh, this guy who's I don't think he's a Muslim. This one. Who's that? Said. It's not. It's not a question. It's not a question for you though. I think it's more a question for me. Okay. Because basically he's still banging on about sociopath. Now, sociopath 
if you want to look at the claim of a sociopath, even though we say it doesn't exist, the character personality, that will come under lying. That will be someone who's manipulating people, tricking people, conning people, trying to get people to, yeah, like Ted Bundy did, like all the other. Yeah, so yeah. It, it would be, a, so, it, so sociopath doesn't come under mental illness because we're talking about an explanation for an angel speaking to the Prophet Muhammad. So we're, we're, we're analyzing what mental illnesses could yeah. produce the, this phenomena of, of him believing an angel was talking to him. And we've gone through the two. Well, I don't think even epilepsy is a, a candidate. Schizophrenia is the one hearing voices and such and such. Okay, can, can so, I just share? Can I just share a screen? I'll show you something. Yeah, okay. Can you see that? One second. Yeah. Okay. So this is from the NHS uh, website. Um, and signs of antisocial personality disorder. Okay, a person with antisocial personality disorder may exploit, manipulate, or violate the rights of others, lack concern, regret, or remorse about other people's distress, behave irresponsibly and show disregard for normal social behavior, have difficulty sustaining long-term relationships, be unable to control their anger, lack guilt, or not learn from their mistakes, blame others for problems in their lives, and repeatedly break the law. So I think oh, it's very sorry. clear that the Prophet ﷺ was not antisocial. Beautifully answered. Okay. Beautifully answered. Yeah, so we can stop sharing. No. Is this still on the I still think it would come under the um, liar. Yes, correct. I'll use that. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Anyone else want to jump on? Are there people any, afraid, any people are probably afraid to jump on now they're getting the arena treatment? Are there any atheists who want to challenge what we said? Oh, the atheists can't touch it, man. Atheists have already got PTSD for this channel. <laughs> Honestly, they come on with this like intellectual superiority, yeah. empirical evidence, such so such certainty, and we're all in faith. And by the time I finish with them, it's all could have, would have, maybes, it might be this. We never know. <laughs> well, what happened to the certainty? Go on, mate. Subhanallah. Um, so the link to join is pinned. Remember, it's got to be on the topic. I mean, I think the other guy's question was a fair question, thinking about the sociopath angle, but it was barking up the wrong tree. Psychosis in general has audio and visual hallucinations. Is that schizophrenia? Yeah. Psychosis. Yeah. So, so psychosis. Um, it, schizophrenia is one psychotic illness, but there's others like drug-induced psychosis, which is different from schizophrenia. I know, really. I know you're an atheist. So, be honest, then. After listening to today's presentation, do you believe that uh, suffering from mental illness could be an explanation to the claim? Be honest. I want, I want to, after listening to what you've heard, are you going to dismiss that and just say he lied and made it up? And he was, uh, would you say it's off the table? No response. No, don't wait. It, it, two, two minute, two minutes oh, okay. uh, delay. <clears throat> oh, um, he's going to respond. Someone just said to me, "How do I feel about my ancestors being crusaded?" I don't know if they were, if they were my ancestors. <laughs> Who knows? I think my 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 name might have originated in Gujarat. Really? Subhanallah. Yeah, Mayat. Mayat, yeah. Could have. I know it goes back to France, but then I don't know where it goes from before then. Why is that question? How do you feel about your ancestors being crusaders? What What's the point? You know, have you ever heard of this? We have a term here in Hamza's Den, right? It's called a red fire engine question. And you know what a red fire engine question is? I should get an emoji for it or, or, or a thingy, like um, a, a, emoji. You know, one of those pictures yeah. to put up. Because basically, you know like when adults are talking at a barbecue or something, and they're, they're talking about sport or what's happened in the news, and then a little five-year-old boy will come up and he'll pull the leg of his dad's friend, and he'll look down and he'll go, I got a red fire engine! <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> 
Yeah, got nothing to do with the conversation they're having about sport or news or whatever. <laughs> just wants to uh, tell him he's got a red fire engine, yeah. And there are people in the chat who just love to present their red fire engine. <laughs> Seriously. And, and that's, a, that's a red fire engine. And nothing to do with the topic, nothing we're discussing. Just <laughs> comes with a red fire engine. SubhanAllah. Oh. SubhanAllah. Really, uh, here's, here's what I'm really saying. I think, and this is the problem. I think social can lie and make people believe. Okay, are you so stupid? I'll ask the question again, really. Listen to the question. Why is he asking not a question? Uh, 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 someone who's, what? Yeah. Why is someone he asking a question you didn't illness, ask? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Someone who suffers from mental illness thinks they're telling the truth. They think this is happening. They, they think they're reporting an actual thing. A liar is saying this thing happened that didn't. Yes. And he knows didn't. So this is this is a different. So telling us sociopaths can lie has got nothing to do with the question I asked you. Do you blink, believe mental illness could be an explanation to his claim based upon what you've heard here today? And this is my problem. You just don't listen, but we'll see. It's, you know, I think I think probably is it a he or a she? I don't know. They. Or they. <laughs> <laughs> because they. I don't know. Yeah, they is, I don't know what they follow. Preferred pronouns, huh? Yeah. Um, is, because is, is yeah. the red fire engine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! They're in their own little world, man. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. I think uh, this uh, really couldn't. Answer your question. That's why you answer the question you didn't ask. I, I think you're giving him too much credit. Okay. I think you're just giving him too much credit. It's like someone said, um, Jamil is saying, I think we wouldn't go down the route of mental illness. I couldn't see their argument. No, of course, because this is, this. you remember what I said to you right at the beginning. This is the atheist claim. This is what they say. Angels don't exist. Yes. So if, if he was honest thinking he was talking to angels, then he's crazy. If he if, if he's not crazy, then he's lying. So this is what we're dealing with. Because we can so after you demonstrate to an atheist that he couldn't be a liar, based upon what the things you've said already, the Quran on, on his life and all these things, right? Then they their their go to after that is crazy. Yeah. Delusional. And then they start trying to say that maybe you got you know, like it was autistic, like Rain Man. So he's exceptionally clever and stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? So this yeah. is the thing. So that's why. Yeah. Yes, too, but Please I ignore that comment. I don't know what that was. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, It's probably the disorganized uh, thoughts and speech of <laughs> schizophrenia. Mm. Uh, yes, too, but that is my Instagram. Abu Isa3. Yeah, Tuba, she, she, she'll be presenting you one of the months. So Hamza, uh, do you think now, inshallah, you've got this angle covered, huh? The mental illness one. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make him look stupid. You you got to do a one in the park and record it. I will do one. I'm I'm known for that. I learn a new argument. I want to present it. Have you have you come across anybody who's made this argument like uh, vociferously? I'm sorry. Have you come across anybody who's made this argument vociferously or like? He's adamant that no, no, no. It just boils down to maybe he was inspirational, yeah. like Hitler and such and such and such. That they were so basically what they say is they diagnose Hitler as crazy, yeah. and then from that point on they say so a crazy person can gather people around him, can gather a following and such and such and such. So th this this is what they uh, this is how it works. So first they diagnose Hitler with with a mental illness. Now the, the, the problem is this: if you know, I mean, I'm not here to justify Hitler in anything he did, but if you follow his story uh, and the situation in Hitler's Germany and an economic war declared by Judea on Hitler's Germany during an economic depression, then it's, it's no wonder that he found support amongst Germans against yeah. this. And then obviously um, he then identified, imagine someone's declared war on you, you're, identi you're going to identify those as the enemy. Yeah. And then what he did then, he systematically went after that enemy. And when he got them out of Germany, he then moved to Poland, which was the... Uh, the main hotbed of them. Do you get me? And he yeah. went, and that's what he did. He went to each country digging out these guys. 
Now, the problem with all of this stuff is that it was the Jews that funded him. Mm. It was the Rothschilds that built his army. Yeah. yeah. So you're like, wait a minute. Plus the work? thing, yeah. Plus the thing is, uh, evil ideology doesn't always have to be explained by mental illness. Some people are evil. No, 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 no. exactly that. Look, Fir'aun, Fir Fir what mental illness did he have? He just had arrogance. It was, you know, yes, uh, it's not like he was psychotic or, or antisocial or whatever. He just, he, some people are purely evil. Yeah. Look, someone put in the comment, what did Hitler predict? It's not about that. Okay, remember who we're talking to. We're talking to atheists. They don't believe in predictions. They don't believe in prophecy, right? They're just <laughs> saying that they're just trying to identify a man in history who, yeah. who was supremely charismatic, who got old people to follow him, his whole country behind him, and yet they diagnose he's mentally ill. So then what they say then is if someone's mentally ill can do that, then why couldn't the prophet have done the same? So this, this is the point. Yes. I swear you guys missed the point. Like, I don't know. What well, such a beautiful presentation you have. It wasn't here for the whole thing. And you've just come in at the end now. Or you're just not paying attention. I just... <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. But I think you should do a you should do a show though. You should do a show. Of, yeah, you know, yeah. let people call you and ask you this, that, the other. And you don't need my vehicle, you could do it yourself, bro. Yeah. Um uh, yeah, I could do, but it's just finding the time. You know, like you'd, be like a be you'd be like a beacon dragging them all away. Like you know, like um taking the moths away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Go to the light! Go to the light! He's over there! He's over there! Oh my god. No Ablo Angle, no Ablo Angle. Look Arabi, yeah, look Arabi. Because the thing is, you see, I swear I don't know the, the mental state of a lot of the commentators there, but if we're inviting people who who've been diagnosed, hmm. oh, I was gonna drive me mental, mate. You know, uh, Hamza, uh, I get loads of people contacting me, and it's like they start like getting upset if I don't con respond within like five hours or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a question marks and this and that. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so, you know, and subhanAllah, it, it, working in mental health is, is challenging. It's not like easy just to speak to somebody for five minutes. You have to give them a lot of time and, and guidance. So, um, but, and then obviously I've got family and I've got work. So it's difficult to, um, you know, but yeah, no. I mean, I do do regular shows. Um, but I, I think, think we need. Well, I think you do well with the regular show and build, build, build on that. To be honest yeah. with you, yeah, because these guys need a home. <laughs> they really, they really do. I feel so. I feel sorry for them. And the problem is, I feel sorry for them when they come here. Yeah, because I just can't do what you do, man. I, I just because you're like looking at them, you're thinking in your mind, oh, okay, you look like you're suffering such and such a thing, so I need to. These are the yeah. triggers. These are the things that are going to yeah. calm you, and this, that, the other. Whereas me, <laughs> it's like the, the sociopath in me comes out. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like I say, and it's not against anybody who, because it's a real thing. It's just as yeah, almost yeah, it's course. a real thing. I can't deal with that real thing because right? yeah. I, I can only work on rationale. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, the only yeah. plane I can work. I can't work when someone goes off that rational plane. I'm lost. Yeah, but they, they don't. Yeah, they don't have uh, control. A lot of them, if they suffer from mental illness, you know, they kind of become very circumstantial. Yeah, I know, I know. It's it's, it's sad. Yeah. I mean, look in Ilfa where I am. I see people walking the streets, and I'm thinking, you should be somewhere, someone taking care of you. Man. Yeah, there's one guy outside this Tesco today. And he was like, he stood up and he was having a conversation with himself, and he was laughing at himself. And then he was abusing people who didn't give him any money. And then he would carry on talking to himself and dancing to himself. And I'm thinking, my idiot. Subhanallah. I gave, I gave him a clip song today, though. He was so happy. <laughs> so hot. So I got him a nice pop. He was really happy. Oh, I, was, I was sat in my car watching him. And I was, he was just like literally having a conversation with himself on the street and laughing at his own jokes and his own comments. I was, yeah, sounds like he's got some sort of illness. <clears throat> is, this, is this 
this geezer real? Is this the same person, really? I, I, that's how I'd respond to that question. Really? Just to, to, uh, really, just jump on. Let's have a discussion. Did, 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 did you not just see what sociopaths are like? And the Prophet Muhammad didn't exhibit any of those symptoms. Even his enemies never accused him of those uh, those symptoms. Did you super chat a question, Shaster? Because oh, uh, what's this? Do psychotic people ever bolster their claims by also lying, for example? Can a crazy man who believes he is a prophet still secretly take material from others to present it as their own? So that, that's that's a loaded question, isn't it? Obviously. Okay. First of all, if somebody's acutely psychotic, they haven't got the mental state to actually think ahead like that. And they wouldn't need to. If you believe you're a prophet and it's a delusion, why would you need to uh, uh, steal from other people? You would believe that you're a prophet. You feel you would believe you are superior to other people. So why would you steal from someone as part of that delusion? It doesn't make sense. I don't understand some of these comments. Are. You know, Hamza, the thing is, like, at the beginning of the presentation, I told you... Um, Thank you very much, Sophie. Dr. Oh. Lopez, Sophie. Um, when somebody makes a, a positive claim, and I've learned this from watching your streams, they have to justify that. Not ask, oh, what, why couldn't it have been this? Why could it not have been depression? Why could it not have... No, you make a claim and then justify your claim. This is, this is the situation, you see, and I don't think they realize what I'm doing to them. So if you don't believe he's telling the truth, then you believe it's one of the other three. Which one is it? Exactly. And whichever one you think it is, you have to tell us why you believe it's that. Yeah. Now, no one after watching today's stream could actually bring up mental illness. And no atheist is ever going to bring up Satan pretending to be an angel. So an atheist, all he's got left now is... He's lying. lying. Yeah. But I think the next one we're going to deal with is the angel... The, the, the so devil the pretending to be an angel crap. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I mean, you know, subhanallah, subhanallah uh, this uh, really person is demonstrating what you just said because he, he or she or they can't argue against this uh, stream. So now they're saying, oh, was he a sociopath? So that means implying that he was lying. Yeah, that's, and, and that's, they will deal with that in time. It's not a problem. That's the only way for them to go. <sighs> I'm going to let this question go because it's from one of my mods. Okay, um, it's I a very. I didn't want to open this can of worms. Yeah, so it's it's a can of worms. It's a very difficult. Um, well, it's not difficult. It's it's a long uh, response, um, and I would say just go to my YouTube channel. I've already addressed this. I've done uh, a couple of streams with uh, Gabriel on this. So, uh, yeah. but, but just just to summarize, <clears throat> there's three groups of people. I think Hamza, maybe we can do a stream later some other time about this. But there's three groups of people. Okay, there's a group of people that have a purely mental illness. Then there's a group of people that have purely a uh, jinn or magic uh, issue. And then there's a third category that have both. Because if you have uh, mental illness, you're more vulnerable to attack by unseen forces. And if you have an issue with jinn, you're also more likely and more vulnerable to have mental illness. One of the ways to tell the difference, I'll just very briefly mention it, is when you recite Quran on somebody with a mental illness, they don't have a negative behavioral response. Somebody who's affected by jinn, I don't know if anybody's done any rukia. Uh, they will frequently change their voice or they will have a physical response to the Quran. Um, subhanallah. Another thing is that speaking a different language. I'll use this uh, uh, example just to highlight. So I have a friend who was in Qatar. He's now back in the UK. So he um, was asked to go and meet a, a, a couple, uh, African-American revert couple in Doha, uh, because the husband was complaining that the wife had there was some change in personality, whatever. So the Sheikh, Sheikh Hazim, actually, he told my friend, go and uh, go to their house and do some Rukia, read uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. <clears throat> so my friend Imran, he said, no, I'm not keen. Anyway, he went. So he asked the husband, what's the issue? He said, he gave some description about his wife acting strange and, you know, um, kind of being aggressive and that stuff. So he said, okay, bring me the Mus'haf um, and I'm going to recite uh, Quran 
if anything happens, you need to like restrain your wife because I'm not allowed to touch a non-mahram woman. So he said, okay, no problem. So he started reciting Quran, and subhanAllah, after a, about a minute, he said that the sister, she started hissing. She started like, she kind of like crouched forward and she started hissing and making strange noises. Um, so the husband was like trying to restrain her. Um, he continued reciting and then he heard a male voice in Arabic. So the, this is an American revert couple who don't speak any Arabic. And my friend, he spoke Arabic. So he was like, subhanAllah, he looked up and the woman was speaking in a male voice in Arabic. Now in mental health, that never happens. I've never seen a case where somebody speaks a different language in a different set, gender. So anyway, he started conversing. It was a jinn. And the jinn told my friend that, look, some magician sent me to cause problem between the husband and wife. So he, he continued reciting and she started attacking him. Uh, so he like found a stick and he was like trying to hit her and re recite at the same time. After another few minutes, he heard another male voice speaking Arabic. SubhanAllah, he looked up and the husband was also possessed. And uh, so now there's two jinns talking to my friend. And he's like cursing the sheikh in his mind because he's like, what, what, what has he got me in, into? Anyway, the brother was a big, uh, big guy, African-American guy. So he started like almost trying to choke him. So my friend, he's, he does Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He kind of like said, Ijlis, and he kicked him across the room. And then he con continued reciting. Then he started having this conversation with these two jinns. Eventually, they managed, he managed to get them uh, out of the body. After, after this incident happened, both the husband and wife had no recollection of what had, what had happened. The brother was like, oh, my ribs are hurting. So my friend's like, I'm really sorry I had to throw a few punches because you're trying to attack me. So that, that mm -hmm. description is purely a jinn issue, not a mental health issue. Um, Archangels Media, the, the, the link is pinned. Is the link not pinned? People are watching on YouTube, is the link pinned at the top? Saying, here's the link, pinned. And I'm pretty sure you're going to come and talk about the devil being an angel. Oh, angel media. Yeah, it, it's going to come on and it's going to say, the link is not pinned. Okay, if the link is not pinned, then I apologize. Why isn't it pinned? I pinned it. But I'm still predicting what he's going to say. Why, why did what was the link? There's the link. Thank you, people, for clarifying. I don't know why, though. Why, why isn't it? Why isn't it pinned? It is. It must be pinned. What's pinned? Everybody's saying it's not pinned. Oh right, your your channel is pinned. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Uh, there we go. A pinned Chantel's. I'm pretty sure that's what he's going to come and say. There we go. Scouse JFT. So is this fella genuinely a mental health expert? Not trying to be disrespectful. Just joined late and don't know who he is. Yes. <laughs> no, Hamza just picked me off the streets and I was speaking to myself and he said, come and talk about mental illness. If you, if you watch the beginning of the stream, you'll see his credentials. Yes, he's a psychiatrist. Is that the right word, psychiatrist? Yes, psychiatrist. Hello, Hamza. How are you, brother? Hello, right, man. Oh, man. I, you know, I've always felt like we had good conversations. I don't know why you're upset. Well, you come on and you're going to say something that's got nothing to do with the topic. Yeah. All right. So, no, I don't think, I don't think that it's ir irrelevant. But um, first of all, thank you, uh, Dr. Abu Isa. Thank you for uh, coming on here and talking about mental health. I think it's a very important thing. And so I just want to say thank you for your time. And Hamza, I think that you're a good man as well. Um, so, yeah. Um, now, uh, you know, I, I think that Muslims and Christians uh, can benefit in, in dialogue. Um, you know, uh, obviously you guys know that Christians like to use uh, the Kalam cosmological argument that was uh, invented by, uh, by Muslims. And uh, it looks like Hamza has uh, used C.S. Lewis's uh, Lord Liar Lunatic argument um and kind of adjusted it a little bit and applied it to muhammad and, and i think that's i think that's probably commendable um so i just wanted to just ask, just so just so you know no no i haven't Sorry. oh no you haven't no oh okay well I, it, it seems similar to uh c.s lewis's uh lord liar lunatic 
um, uh-huh. in reference to Jesus. Um, have you have you heard that argument at all before or no? I, I, uh, Justin, I actually spoke to a friend of mine recently. He was mentioning the same thing. He's a Muslim. One uh-huh. of the things that I think it's important to highlight, the di- one of the differences is that um, preservation of, of information. So how do we know like what we the information we have about Jesus? How do we know that? that no, 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 don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. No, no, I'm I, just saying I, that's a yeah, yeah I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, brother. I'm not really an apologetics channel. I, no, I, I, fine, I know very little about Islam, to be honest with you. I have read, um, so far, I've read the opening, the cow, and the family of Aaron. No, not Aaron. What, Aaron. What, listen, what have you come on to do? Because if it's not on topic, um, we'll say goodbye and see you another time. For sure. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about um, it, the argument that you seem to be. Uh, putting forward is that a person cannot be uh, mentally ill and also lying and also um, demonically motivated or anything like that. No, uh, that's not what I'm saying. That's not your argument? No. No. Okay, I'm sorry. Would you mind um, clarifying a little bit? No. No. Okay. Well, um, all right. Well, hopefully I'll get a chance to see you guys then later then. Maybe. All right. Hamza, you have a good day, man. Thank you, Thank Abu. You. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Thanks. He acts all nice, but he hangs around with Sam Shimon and David Wood. This guy is not sincere whatsoever. And we know that. So what was he trying to imply that the Prophet ﷺ was lying, was psychotic, and he's Christian. He's Christian. He, he will believe that Satan is the devil. Uh, Satan pretended to be an angel. He's a Christian. That's their claim. So what he's basically trying to say is someone can't be meant he says what we're saying is someone can't be mentally ill and lie. No, that's not, that. that's not what we're saying. That's not we're saying first of all, to be mentally ill, diagnosed mentally ill, there is uh, criteria there is symptoms. Yeah. yeah. And, and and that's that's the thing. So uh, he comes yeah. across all respectable. I've seen him outside of here and who he speaks to and how he speaks about it. So and I've seen comments of his on other yeah. people's videos. He thinks I'm stupid. He thinks he can come on out. So I'll oh, respect everybody. Waste that time, mate. And also, men- mental illness. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, what are you saying? What are you saying? Sorry. I was just going to say, mental illness is a broad term. So somebody who has mild depression can lie. It's what we. That's not yeah. what we were saying. Yeah. Just to clarify that. Yeah. Uh, Lucy. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Waalaikum Waalaikum yes. Yeah, I've been diagnosed as having two psychiatric conditions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had oh, yeah. exceptional emotional intelligence, and also and also he noticed patterns like when Aisha radiallahu and her would swear by one time she would swear by by the Lord of. Ibrahim alayhi salam and one time she would swear by the Lord of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam combined both emotional and spatial and all forms of intelligence as one hadith describes him as being sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as being the most intelligent human being that I think I think that hadith comes from Aisha radiallahu anha mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can you can ask me a question as a neurodivergent person if if you're curious about my conditions and stuff, like what it's like firsthand experiencing them. Yeah, I think um, Jazakallah khair for sharing, but it's probably like not appropriate to share your you know uh, particular issues on the public uh, stream. If you want to get in touch, you can get in touch. Um, just put, put a message on my channel or something, and uh, you can email me. Um, because I think it's just better to discuss this offline because it's quite personal medical history and psychiatric history, which is probably not appropriate to share. One reason I developed one of my psychiatric conditions is because I was under a lot of stress having become Muslim and stuff. Sister, you just said you didn't want to ask you the question. Yeah. And, okay. No, he 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 didn't. He said no. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't think this is the right forum, uh, sister. So if you can, yeah, just to get in touch with me through Twitter or any of the social media accounts, and we can have a chat offline, inshallah. Okay, jazakallah khayyan. Yeah. But a lot of reverts do go through a lot of stress yes, because it is because families are not always accepting of it. I understand. 
No, no, one, no one's challenging the concept that you might have some episode or something, but it's not the right place. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, take care, Mrs. Assalamualaikum. What's the lion heart saying? Would it be considered sociopathic behavior if you tied an old lady's legs uh, and hang to camels and made them pull apart you? What is that comment? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You're attracting the ball, mate. You're attracting the wall. Tuba, I don't. I don't want to share my email address on on the public. <laughs> I've got to get like five hundred emails. This I is usually, my, this yeah. Is my I usually ask people to get in touch uh, through my account, and then I can. Do you think this is disrespectful? What's that? Mental in speakers' corner. Mental. Have you seen mental? Me I swear, it's like the local mental hospital had a day, has a day trip every Sunday, and the coach piles up, and Hatun gets on it, and Asif gets on it, and Captain Bloodfire gets on it, and K gets on it, and Soko gets on it. And you they all and they bring it to, to Hyde Park and they all pile off. They spend the day at Speaker's Corner, go for a meal later, and then it's back to the hospital. Because they're all mental. Uh, Honestly, what flow cook was this, man? SubhanAllah. That was an organic conversation I was having with someone who probably is suffering from mental illness as well. That was the irony. The guy I'm talking to, yeah, who's yeah. agreeing with me, he himself suffers from some kind of mental illness. It was it Subhanallah. was it was fun. Subhanallah. But, have you uh, seen have you seen Shutter Island? Yes, that is that is I, I actually I was telling them about this the other day and uh, I nearly gave the game away, but uh, that's a brilliant uh, there's a brilliantly it, made movie about uh, uh, the ending is just like Yeah, yeah. It's what? Amazing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, I thought yeah. Sixth Sense was a mad ending, but yeah. that beat Sixth Sense. Yeah, yeah. Shutter Island, brilliant. There's a You've lot of good, um, yeah. Yeah, you must love all those psychological flex. Yeah, yeah, I, lo I love those. Yeah. What about the shining? Um, not, it's all right. I'm not that big fan. I don't know, is that supernatural, or is, is is that like possession thing, or is that mental? Illness? Yeah, I think it's more supernatural, isn't it? More supernatural, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, Shutter Island is good. It's one of those movies. Just, I'm not, I don't think you can watch it again, actually. But yeah, 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 yeah. looking for Shutter them. Island. I've, I watch regularly. I really enjoy it. Yeah, do you start looking for the clues and give it away? Yeah, yeah, yes. Leonardo yeah, yeah. Which, which point? Wait a minute, wait a minute. If that's the case, why is he doing that there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. All right, uh, we've been on for three who's hours this, now. Who's this, who's this Hamza in the back? It's just a video I just shared. Oh, it's the video, okay. Oh, yeah, I'll share the other video I play. I usually play that video, yeah. And then this is the video I play after it. It's on topic. Yeah, I agree. Okay, just a quick one. Right. I did a video yesterday about likening the Christians of Speaker's, Speaker's Corner to mental patients on a day out. Okay. You supporters of these guys are not helping them. Yeah. You're encouraging the mental illness. You're, you're, you're saying, well done, you, you won the debate, well done, Hamza was smoked. The problem you've got is you don't even understand the argument being presented. You don't even, that means you don't even recognize how miserable the, per, the Christian I'm talking to failed. All you saw was a Christian ranting, uh, producing rhetoric, and because they're a Christian, you blindly applaud it and think they did something. You're encouraging their mental illness, and it needs to stop. That was my public service announcement. <laughs> Honestly. Mental health advocate, mashallah. MashaAllah. You know, you know, the worst thing is, though, like I say, when people are suffering from mental illness and you can see it, you're experiencing it, yeah? Yeah. And then when people watch those people in action, they're actually saying, you did brilliant, yeah! Keep going, go queen! <laughs> and stuff like yeah. that. And, and so you, you reinforce them. Yes, yeah. You, you reinforce them that, that what they're doing is, is okay. And then they go out and do it again. And then yeah. it becomes a cycle. And you're like, do you not realize what you're doing? You know, I, I, well, I said something, right? I said, look, we need to make a video of these people. I'm, I need to make a montage, right? And we need people who know these people to say, Victor, what are you doing? <laughs> Was that you? I, you, you know, you need their carers or their family to see them and just say, shake some sense into them. What are you doing? Why 
are you going to behave like a maniac on a Sunday there? Yeah. Honestly. yeah. The thing is, um, people with mental illness are vulnerable, so other people exploit them um, for their own entertainment. As yeah, well. yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. So I think, you know, like, um, they, they'll, for their own entertainment, they're like, yeah, go, they'll egg them on. But yeah, they're actually damaging that individual. Yeah, it's, un- it's unreal. But the thing is, though, the, the, the individual feels validated. Yeah, in the, of course. In yeah. The yeah, yeah. Look, if, if you say to me that, oh, I, I get visited by aliens every night, and I say, oh, yeah, Hamza, that's amazing. What do they look like? Is the spaceship, does it have, like, lights shining? How do you communicate? I, I'm, re- I'm kind of reinforcing your delusion. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a prime example. I mean, this is, this is my dad. He believes he's, he fights with angels against demons. Hmm. He re- literally does. The angels come to him and say, come on, we're going to go. We're going to go. Yeah. And, and his missus, you know, she's like, not my mum, it's his partner. And she's like, yeah. yeah, yeah, they took me to go onto a mountain to watch it and this, that. And I'm like, bloody hell, you're reinforcing it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. What are you, what, you, and my dad's not mental. If, if you speak to my dad, he's so coherent. He's not, he's not like that, but he's, that's why I think it's something else because he's, he's messed with spirituality for so long. Right, right. Um, when, when you say to me, I, took an, I, I couldn't handle it. Right? It's the worst thing I've ever heard anyone ever say to me that yeah. Raphael and Mikhail come to him and say, come, let's go. And then he was like, he went into like some kind of uh, meditation or something, right? And yeah. um, he, he came out with it and he, and he said to, oh, that was very relaxing, this, that, the other. And his missus like, what? You were fighting this, that? <laughs> I said, shut up so anyway so um that's well that's when that's when it crosses the border because he's not i don't think he's mentally deranged he actually thinks this is happening but i don't think it's a um a mental illness in that sense sometimes, sometimes you have yeah sometimes you have a delusional disorder where they only have a fixed delusion but the rest of their, their function normally yeah so some, yeah so it sounds like maybe that might be something i don't know it's, yeah, but then this is to reinforce it. I can see that. Okay, that's what it's all about. You reinforce each other. Yeah, it's like it's like he does healing. He does healing, right? Okay. And um, oh yeah, this woman she had a bad shoulder, and and I touched her and healed her, and she said, oh, well, that's all right now. And anyway, so his missus had conjunctivitis. So okay. uh, they're always sick. They're conjunctivitis. So I said, why didn't you heal her? He goes, what? I said, why why didn't you heal her? He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, you do that healing thing, innit? You know, why didn't you heal her eyes or something? Yeah, He's yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, I can't, 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 can't cure that. I'm like, it seems to me you can only cure ailments which you cannot see have been cured. <laughs> oh, I felt a warm sensation. Oh, that feels better. You know what I mean? Rather than, oh, I'll heal your cut or I'll take the cancer tumor out of you or something. You know what I mean? It's always some kind of anecdotal, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, yes. subjective. The per- person's yeah. probably having placebo effect. Probably start exactly. part of the same church, to be honest. And they're all reinforcing <laughs> each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah There's that something works. that works. There's something called shared psychotic delusions, by the way. Somebody can uh, share the same psycho- psychotic symptoms. So if I have if I have a certain psychotic symptom, I you can it's called folia duh. So both usually family members they share the same uh, delusion. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unreal. Can you challenge oh, him? Like, can you say to him, uh, Dad, your mind's playing tricks on you. You don't actually. The problem, the problem is, right, I took him out for a nice weekend away, yeah, and it, it was it was the moment we were saying goodbye. Oh, thanks, son, you're really good. Put him in the hotel, went for a watch a movie, we went to Chess and the World of Avengers, everything good. And it, and, it, and it was literally, this is what it was literally like, right? Yeah, yeah, it's been lovely. Okay, Dad, before you go. <laughs> literally, it was that. Literally, it was that because I had to do this dawah now because uh, yeah. I promised myself I'm going to speak to him about Islam. And, and it came right then when we were saying goodbye and we'll see you next year and all this kind of stuff. And, and so I tried to squeeze it all in. And realistically, I think what I need to do, I need to go to his territory in yeah. his manner, in his place, and let him spill the beans. And I just need to let him unravel it. Yeah, I think that's definitely. what needs to be done. Because I, I, I was just laughing. I, I yeah, couldn't stop yeah. laughing. You see? You see? Didn't... You know what I mean? Well, yes, yeah, yeah. I, 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 it would be better to let him unravel and then make him sound, actually think about what he's saying to me and thinking, yeah, yeah. yeah. really? I don't know. Anyway, that's how I suffer. And my, my, my poor mum, she she uh, she had a fall of Alzheimer's yeah, and she was in this person's, old person's home. It was during COVID, I think it was. Yeah, it was just mm. COVID time. And uh, no, I think it was just after COVID, actually. 
And she's like, um, she's believing she had a son in, in Vegas called Elvis. Because she was a really big Elvis fan, yeah. Right, right. Anyway, I went out to see her, and the nurse is saying to me, okay, and, I, and uh, my sister was saying to me, look, she thinks that she's got a son in, in Vegas called Elvis and this, that, the other. So she starts talking about it. Just just go along with it. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Yeah, she starts talking about this Elvis and starts just, you know, just, yeah, just, just go with it. Uh, There's absolutely no chance I can do that. There's just no way can I reinforce this delusion. Do you know what I mean? And it was, yeah. it was, a, it was a horrible thing I've ever experienced in my life that someone doesn't recognize you. Who loves yeah, the bones of you? Subhanallah. And subhanAllah, this happened in like, she asked me to give her a Quran. I didn't give it to her. Two weeks later, she had this fall and it triggered something in her mind. And, and she, she was, uh, <clears throat> she was gone now. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I just wasted away in this old person's home. Yeah, dem- dementia is very um, heartbreaking, actually. Especially oh. yeah. because you look at people who you're supposed to recognize them, don't, don't care yeah. about you. You know the the Prophet Sallam used to make a dua not to like live too long, where you become dependent on other people and the life cycle. Oh, you know, you, you're born as a baby, you're you're completely dependent. You're gonna then return you return to it. Then you become arrogant when we become adults, and then we become completely dependent again. Oh, so I'm all right. I'm not sure about this comment. Did you have to super chat it just quickly? <laughs> can't say. I can't say that. You can't say that. What do you think? Um, I don't think it's a it's a mental illness at that at the strategy level. It's a it's a deliberate attempt to, you know change morality and you know change uh degrade society but people can become deluded uh, into believing that this is something especially children um because children's minds are still developing and they're influenced by the environment so you can convince somebody that you're actually a boy when you're a girl or you're a girl when you're a boy you know so parenting and the society is really important but I wouldn't call it a mental illness in the, from that perspective. Like, but I mentioned to you, homo, homosexuality was classified as a mental disorder in, yeah. in the DSM. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I think we'll call it a day. I think I think it's been a fantastic stream. Exactly. I think yeah. your presentation was next level, and whoever has to follow you, I feel sorry for them. I was thinking of getting uh, Adnan Rashid to do the historical uh, the live flex. That'd be good. Yeah, mashallah. I think it'd be really good. I'm going to tell him, I'm going to show him the slides and that saying, listen, man, this is, this is, this is the standard that's been set by Dr. Abel Issa. So we've got to uh, reach really um, But yeah, no, mashallah, it's been good. Um, I think, to be honest with you, I think the presentation was so good, couldn't really ask questions. Alhamdulillah. Because it wasn't just a presentation, it you was kind of doing the rebuttals as you was doing the presentation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So people would have got answers to their own questions. There's not, not yeah. one person mentioned the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Apart from yeah. the atheist who's trying to muscle in sociopath, which will come under a different claim. Yeah, but the, but that that means that the job's done because he can't he or she or they can't uh, re, kind of rebut what we were saying about mental illness. Yeah, no, they, they can't rebut yeah. it. So, um, and even if they want to try and say a crazy person can lie. We say a crazy person can lie. Let's divine the crazy person. What mental illness are they suffering from? What symptoms? Exactly. That, this is the point. This that's is the it. Point. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get away with saying crazy guy now. You got to yeah. demonstrate that he was crazy before you can say the crazy guy is lying. Yeah. Before you say the crazy guy is lying, why is the guy crazy? Subhanallah. And not you just that. You have to define which mental illness uh, you say he had and yeah. how. And yeah. You can't just say, "Oh, he, he heard voices, so he's mentally ill." You have to demonstrate. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, uh, the, epile- yeah. the epilepsy one is just a, is a joke, bro. Come on. I mean, you know, how, how can anybody claim he, he was he- having an epileptic seizure when he was... Oh, because like, what they basically did, they go to the hadith you quoted yes. about sweat. And then, and then transpire... And uh, they say, well, yeah, so when you have an epileptic fit, you sweat. Therefore, be sweat. It could be an epilepsy. How does epilepsy explain an illiterate man coming with the Quran? Exactly. And the fact that they don't have any memory during their seizure. Yeah. 
Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Ray and Ali is saying podcast. In podcast. Podcast what? What's that? Podcast. Ryan what's, that? what's the difference between this and a podcast? Other than, I suppose, you've sat in the same... Is that the difference? What's the difference? I don't get it. Podcast, was... you don't... Podcast is just two or three people having a chat. You don't really interact with the with the audience, isn't it? Oh, is that what it is? So you don't chat to the okay? Yeah, like like Andrew Tate did a podcast recently with Tristan, his brother. I think yesterday. Ah, okay, okay, I mean, okay. Yeah. To be honest with you, the main use of ponders before when we before we do our philosophy lesson, we have like a twenty minute chat, and I'll be honest with you, they, they, they would they would make amazing podcasts. You tell him I should press a record button early, man, because. I was even saying to him that once a month I need to come up to Bolton and we just need to do just sit down and chill and just have a chat. Have a chat. Next time I come to Qatar, I'm going to come to that purple room, mate. Pink room, whatever it is. Why is it pink? <laughs> oh, it's the you see, uh, uh, RGB light. It changes. I can do it blue next time. I can do. Why it is red. it pink though? Why do you choose? It's it? not pink. It's purple. It's pink. Pink, purple, whatever, man. Pink, magenta. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I want to. Uh, next time I'm going to do a stream sat in that room. Oh, welcome. When are you coming, man? When are you coming? Uh, I have to come before September. Uh, it's hot there now, isn't it? Bro, it's 52 degrees here today. Oh, my God. It's hot. It's hot, hot, hot. Yeah. Um, I'm going to Malaysia. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to be in Qatar for like an hour um, on okay. the 8th of July. Because I'm going to okay. I'm going to Malaysia. So I'm flying by Qatar. When, uh, how long are you going for? A month? To, no, we're to Malaysia. Yeah. No, no, no. Eight, nine days. All right. I, I'm coming to the UK next week, inshallah. Next week? Yeah. I'm, I'll be there for a month. Oh, mashallah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll be in Newcastle and Manchester. Manchester. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah, because I was supposed to go to Speaker's Corner this Sunday. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'll be honest with you, right? I had a car accident yesterday. Yeah. And, and if this if this car was it hit us three, three foot further up, could well be dead. I'm not joking. Bro. We, was, we sat we sat in stationary traffic, yeah. And this Range Rover plowed into my back corner, right? Oh, yeah. Smacked into me, went out, came back and smacked into the car in front of a in front of me. Yeah, or two cars down, I think it was, and then went out again, and then they were three foot further forward. It would it would have yeah. wiped me out. Subhanallah. Unreal. So, so basically, I, I usually go speak to one of my car, and this that my car now, can, it's, it's in the garage, and I don't know, ten days are going to try and fix it or something. It's, it's, it's Ahmed, yeah, Ahmed bin Muhammad. What's the doctor's analysis of the mental <laughs> mental bus? Yeah, 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 Subhanallah. It 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 reminds me of uh, some psychiatric movies I've seen. <laughs> it's what? It reminds me of some psychiatric movies I've seen, and also when I used to work on the uh, secure psychiatric unit, we used to it's like. Thing, watch... isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, one floor of the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, and we used to we used to take patients uh, for day day trips, so it reminds me of that. Yeah, I was I was kind of hurt, you know that. I've got a bad back now. The ambulance came up um, and they put me in it and they put all probes on me and everything, but they were, they were quite impressed as well. The only thing they said was that your your heart rate's high. Because my heart rate was uh, 125. Yeah. And it's supposed to be between, between 90 and 100, is it? Yeah. Well, it should be less. It should be around between 80 and 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they said, well, we're, we're concerned because your heart rate is 125. And they were like, you know, sometimes it can be high because of anxiety. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do anxiety. What? No, but you just you were just involved in the car crash. So obviously you're going to... Yeah, but high. still, I'm still not thinking... I'm, I'm still thinking logically trying to problem solve. You know what I'm saying? So I think it dropped. It dropped to a one ten. I think that was the lowest it got to. Mm. And they were like, "Well, we th we think that um, it's a bit high, but yeah. like I said, it could be because I said, yeah. listen, the amount of incompetence going on around me, right? Not the not the, the ambulances were good. The police were ridiculously bad. Ridiculously bad. The, this this girl who hit me, uh, some Afghani boys turned up." And they 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 scurried her away before the police arrived because I don't think she was really? sure to drive this car. Subhanallah. Yeah. And um, and everyone was acting like never before, never seen before in my life, Governor. These these police car turns out right. Whenever I can stop with police, right? They're always um, proper, tough, doing things by the book, this that the other, right? This flipping Laurel and Hardy police car turn up, right? Two community support <laughs> officers get out. I was like, what the? 
why are you sending community support officers, right? <laughs> and they were like, they were like having a field day. He was like, yeah, they were stopping traffic here and there. And there's, there's no need. And then I'm trying to explain to them, look, you can see the, her damage is on her left side. My damage yeah. is on my right side. She was claiming that she came out. If she came out, the damage would be on her right side, not her left side. <laughs> oh, well, it's your word against her. Like, well, shut up. It's not. It's common sense. So then this yeah. stupid other police car turned up with this kid who looks about 18. So it took me, all right, uh, so what happened, mate? I said, I'll explain what happened. He, I said, you got any pain? I think this is what it's to have an excuse to leave. I mean, I get it, but yeah, my back. It's like, yeah, my shoulder. <laughs> oh, your shoulder, yeah. Or maybe that was the seatbelt. I said, well, the seatbelt's like that. It would be my right hand side if it was that. There's no seatbelt in it. But, and then I turn around, they've gone. Laurel and Hardy are still there, flipping, just having a field day. It was, it was, it was absolutely bizarre, bro. Comedy. My, my, comedy. Oh, bro. I, 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 I phoned uh, the AA to recover, right? They said, oh, sorry, uh, it's not a breakdown. It's, it's an accident. It's another department. I'm like, yeah, all right, no worries. This, oh, this happened at like, quarter past 11 in the morning, right? Yeah, I was on my way to my wholesalers with my missus, and uh, this happened. We stuck in stationary traffic and just plowed into us, yeah? And then I'm like, I phoned my, and they said, oh, don't worry. We've seen the other cars insured, on, and, um, you know, we'll get the vehicle recovered and stuff. I said, okay, so what time? And they said, about 1 o'clock, 1.30. I'm like, yeah, no problem. So the, the, my, my car's on the roundabout, yeah, in a, in a dodgy position. So the police came and said, can you, can you move the car? I was like, move it. Said, oh, there's a hotel car park over there. As soon as I moved it over to this, right, oh, actually, I said, what about the AA? They're coming here. And he goes, don't worry. Um, we'll, we'll redirect the AA. We'll redirect the AA. Don't worry. I was like, all right. So, so I moved my car off this roundabout, right? I came back. So I was chatting to this copper. I said, so have you contacted the AA? He goes, what? I says, have you contacted the AA? He goes, we don't do that. I said, you just, you just said it. No, no, we don't, we don't do that. You do that. I said, you just said to me, you'll redirect them. No, what I meant was you tell them. <laughs> Are you mental? So anyway, so I tell the AA, guess what happens then? I get this message. Uh, uh, the recovery now will be here 4.55. I was like, what? I thought it was one o'clock. Oh, no, no, it's going to be 4.55 now. I'm just like, but, but you said 1 o'clock. Yeah. Well, no, sorry, nothing we can do about it. 4.55. Right, so this hotel's called the Crown Plaza. Okay. So I was like, okay, so they're saying 4.55. So then I said, right, I'm going to contact my insurance company. So yeah. they got to a different recovery company, RAC. They said they're going to be here at 3.30. So I was like, what do we do? Better do we go with the AA or do we go with, yeah. with, the, with the insurance company? So I said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go have lunch in this hotel. Yeah, we had yeah. a nice, Mr. Nice Sam. I said, we had a nice meal here. Anyways, we had a nice meal there, right? So 3.30, I go back to the car because we're waiting for the RAC to come because they said 3.30. Anyway, we got a phone call. I think it's the RAC. Yeah, it's AA, mate. All right, how you doing, mate? Uh, yeah, we're, we're at the Crown Plaza. I says, well, I'm at the Crown Plaza. Well, yeah, we're just near the entrance. I'm like, stood outside the entrance, mate. Is that the wrong Crown Plaza? Oh, I said, where are you, mate? He goes, oh, Crown Plaza, King's Cross. I said, the what? The Crown Cl Pl Plaza King's Cross. I said, I'm in the Crown Plaza uh, Hangar Lane, Ealing. What? Well, why are you at King's Cross? Oh, I don't know, mate. I'll, I'll get back to you, right? Five minutes later, I get this phone call from, from the, this AA guy, this boss. Yeah, I do, mate. It's not AA. It's, you know, they farm it out, don't they? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard you're in Ealing. I said, yeah. He goes, oh, we're at King's Cross. I said, yeah, I know. I said, what's I'm going to get here? He goes, oh, we ain't coming. I said, what do you mean you're not coming? No, that's too far, mate. We, we can't come. No, we're busy. We've got other jobs. I need a job. What are you talking about? You've got other jobs. I have the job. Uh, right? He goes, no, we're gonna we'll have to tell them to send someone else. Like, what? And with the AA, as soon as you ask someone, it's four hour. Oh, anyway, so I'm waiting, right? And then this RAC guy phones. 340. Brilliant, the RAC guy's there. Yeah. Sorry, mate, I've delayed an hour. What? Five o'clock they came in the end. SubhanAllah, subhanAllah. Bro. Yesterday, I realized nobody cares. Everyone's on autopilot. Yeah, no, nobody, nobody cares. And, and what happened, right? <laughs> we, we, we were left. Me and the missus, we just sat there on this roundabout. Police have gone. Everyone else has gone. We're sat looking at each other, going, "What the bloody hell happened? Why are we this bloody roundabout?" <laughs> it was absolute disastrous. But it could have been absolutely disastrous. And this is why, you know, I wanted to, I was going to bring this up in a stream, to be honest with you, because, you know, people are thinking about Islam. And so we were sat in stationary traffic. A car came into us, 20, 30 mile an hour, 
Yeah. No follow her on. We're just sat there and it could happen to anyone. Yeah. And it's all over. Yeah. yeah. Panel loss. Panel loss. So it, it was, it was, um, it was, oh. The only people who were good was the ambulance. They were the best. And they were all Muslims, alhamdulillah. Bashir, Malik, and Zara. Really, really good, mashallah. Mashallah, mashallah. Yeah, Everyone I mean, else was an absolute tool. It just shows, bro, when we're in the grave, we're going to be alone, man. Nobody's going to care about us. Oh, nobody cares about you in the dunya. Nobody. All these coppers cared about was, stop blocking the fucking road, mate. Yeah. That's all they cared about. Get you off the road. Let traffic continue. Uh, have a lovely day. SubhanAllah. And, and, that, and that was it. And then we're like trying to get this courtesy car. You know, you pay insurance, isn't it? You get a courtesy car. So we're like, okay. Uh, well, no, it's not a courtesy car. So what do you mean it's not a courtesy car? No, so what it is, we get you a higher car and we we pay for it. Yeah, okay, that's fair. All right. So then this, this, this flipping enterprise car company, absolute shower, call me, right? Uh, yeah, I um, believe you've been in that soon. We got the car. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, problem we have right now. What's the problem you've got right now? Well, um, we don't know who the other insurer is. I said, yeah, but the car was insured because they checked. Yeah, but we don't know who it is. I said, okay, I'm sure you're going to find that out in your investigations. Yeah, but until we know who it is, we can't give you a car. I'm like, what? No, we can't give you a car. Are you serious? Oh, yeah, listen, listen, listen. I haven't finished yet. I said, what do you mean? You can't give me a car. Well, we have to get the insurance company first. Then when we get that, then we can give you the car. I'm saying, why? You know it's, you know it's insured, whatever. So how long is that going to take? You know what he said to me? He said to me, uh, about 10 days. I was like, what? <laughs> you, you're giving me a courtesy car that I can use whilst my car is being repaired, but you're going to take 10 days to give it to me? No, oh, subhanAllah. I said, are you serious? Yeah, well, we can't, we can't do anything with that. All right, all right, okay, back to the, the, the insurance. Listen, this shower, they're saying that now that you have to know the insurance company. So they, they changed it and they said, okay, so what it is, we'll treat it as if you're fully comprehensive. So we'll treat it as if we're paying out so then they can give it to you like as an emergency. So anyway, so the call, yeah, okay, so they've said that now, so they give you the car. I said, okay, uh, you just need to bring your driving license. At the end. And my photo card license has expired. Right? And I applied for it, they've not given it yet. And they're like, well, we can't give you the car then. I said, why? <laughs> Like what? No. Okay. But I said, well, my wife's got hers. Can she get it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, she can get it, but you can't drive it. <laughs> no, you're driving me nuts, you people. The right. Then, right. So then I've got this other car that's been sat on my drive that I've not been using for the past two months because we're driving the new car. This one had a flat tire, MOT's gone, and everything. Right. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get that car fixed up. Forget this higher car. I'm going to get my, my other car fixed up. Right. So I um I uh. <laughs> I call the AA again. Yeah, hello. This is a this is a home start breakdown, yeah? Right? So this is not an accident. Yeah, I'm covered for this. Change my tire. Okay, uh, what's the registration? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, sorry. Uh, we can't do that. I said, what do you mean you can't come and change the tire? Well, the car's not MOT'd. I was like, yeah, I know the car's not MOT'd. That's why I'm getting the tire fixed. So I can take it to have its MOT. Well, we can't do that. I was like, what do you mean you can't do that? Well, no, we can't change the tire to make a car roadworthy if it's not valid to be on the road. I said, yeah, but the car's on my drive. It's on my drive. You're just going to come change it. All I'm asking you to do is change your wheel, mate. All I'm asking you to do. We can't do that. But what we can do, <laughs> but what we can do, but you'll have to pay for it. We can send a tow truck, right? And, and we can pick up the car and we can take it to the MLT station. I was like, what? So you can't come and change the tire, but you can come and pick up the car and you'll take it to the MLT station for me. Yeah, we can do that. How much is that going to cost? Hundred and nine pound. What? I've been paying for AA for years. Never used you guys. The minute I need you, you were clueless yesterday, sending drivers to the recovery trucks to the wrong place. And and today you're saying you can't repair a tire. I said how? I said okay. I said okay. okay fair enough. I've got the I've got my uh, MLT booked. <laughs> right? Yeah. What what time can this recovery truck come? The earliest estimated time of arrival is four hours. Oh, subhanAllah. Four hours? Why four hours? So then I had to call a uh, mobile tire replacement guy to come to my house to change the change the, 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 the wheel. Why didn't you do it yourself? I haven't got the tools. Okay. And then so I, I took the uh then I took the car, got it MOT'd, 
Uh, I, I think it cost me to get the tire fixed, uh, get, do the MOT, fix everything, 350 quid or something like that. So alhamdulillah, I went from having a broken down car onto my drive that was no MOT and you couldn't drive it to, yeah. uh, mashallah, the, you know, a backup car's fully legal now. Mashallah. But that's why you, oh, that's why you need to live in the Khalij, man. You can get oh, anybody from the street and just pay them bro, ten riyals. Every, every step of the way, yeah, look, I'm relying on people to do what they're paid to do. Yeah, every single one was incompetent. Every oh. single one. I turned up at the airport to go to Turkey on Wednesday. Yeah, my flight's twenty past twelve. The M 11s blocked, so I got I got to the the airport eleven twenty three. Check-ins closed. What? Yeah, sorry. Well, my flight back is tomorrow at 2.50 in the afternoon. Yeah, sorry, closed. I said, well, can't you just tell them to come back? No, they won't come back. So I, I, I paid an Uber to go there, an Uber to come back. Then I had to book a flight for seven uh, for 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah? I got an Uber back there. I flew to Istanbul um, on the Wednesday. Uh, uh, chaos at that time. And I flew back out of there at nine o'clock so and Uber right. back. <laughs> and then but yesterday that happened. So and the worst thing is there was two things happening yesterday. One, my missus sending stuff back to her family in Morocco. So she had to go shopping and everything. So she said, come with me to the wholesalers. We'll buy the scarves and then we'll go do your shopping because the guy's collecting it today. What happens? That happens. She does no shopping. I buy no scarves. We just sat there for, waste a whole day sat in this roundabout. SubhanAllah. Bro, I was looking at the stream. I was looking at this stream today, thinking, "Can I do it?" <laughs> After the past two days I've had, can, can I can I do it? And um, Subhanallah, I'm so happy. With it. Alhamdulillah. You know, Hamza, with my learning point from what you just said is Allah's in control of everything, bro. We have plans, but He's got plans for us, and definitely He saved you from some bigger calamity. Inshallah. But I did learn something today, which was really good. So, cause, so basically, I got my car back on the road, which has been sat on my drive doing nothing. And the amazing thing was, right? Wallahi, this is not a word of a lie. We were um, we were discussing the second car, right? It was at that moment in time. What should we do about it? I was going to give it to my dad because, um, uh, you know, my, my, my stepsister, she, her daughter needs a car and this, that, the other. So we think for them. What should we do? Our daughter's learning lessons. Should we keep it for her? We think what to do, yeah? Bang! <laughs> that was it. So we, just as we were talking about it, this flipping car writes us off, right? Surprise. So then what happens? Um, so today, so to get MLT done, my boot doesn't open on my car, right? It don't open. So, and last time I went for the MLT, they said, you need to be able to open the boot for the MLT. I was like, yeah, I know, but can, can, you, can you help us out, mate? So anyway, so he let it off. So I can't go back with the same car for an MLT and the boot's still not opening, right? So around the corner, so this tire guy who came to me, he says, oh, there's, there's a, um, because I needed to get the tire fixed because he just changed it, but I didn't, he didn't fix the, yeah. repair, the, the one that we needed repairing. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, a new tire. So he said, there's a tire place just down the road, just go there. So I was like, yeah, all right. So I go down there, I turn up there, and there's no tire place there. It's all scrappage. It's all scrappage, right? I'm like, oh, flipping it, mate. And he goes, what happened? Where's the, where's the tires and all that? He's like, oh, no, we don't do that anymore. He goes, what do you mean? Yeah, now we just do scrap now. I said, oh, flipping it, so you can't fix my tire. He goes, no, nah, mate, we don't do that anymore. I'm like, oh. I said, can you open my boot? I said, can you open my boot? He goes, what do you mean? I says, yeah, my boot is jammed. It won't open a tire. And he goes, no, we don't do that, mate. I said, I'll tell you what, it's 50 quid here. You can open that boot, I'll give you 50 quid now. Wow. They called this, this Algerian guy, really nice guy, Marshall Abba Hamza. And um, he tried to open it, the bolts off, but the lock has got, lock's gone on it or something like that. Yeah. So anyway, so he talks to me, and he's and we talking about um, ULES, which is like, you know, the uh, road emissions and things like that, because it's be, the, the, the place is being spread out. So I was like, um, he goes, is this ULES compliant, this car? I was like, because I said to him, we was going to sell it, but I'm not, I don't know, is it ULES compliant? So yeah. we checked and it was. And he goes, yeah, because they're doing the scheme. Because what's the scheme? He goes, well, if you've got a vehicle that's not ULES compliant, yeah, you can scrap it for two grand. And if you've got a van, you can scrap it for five grand. He goes, this wow. is why what I'm doing now, because everyone's bringing their vans and everything and they're getting squashed. And just so happens, I have a van that I was thinking of getting rid of next week for a grand to webernicow.com. Let's get rid of it, yeah? Yeah. I learned that that van is worth five grand to me. Wow. Now, now, I'm thinking to myself, would I have known this if what happened yesterday didn't happen? 
Subhanallah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, so Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Amazing. <clears throat> Tested in a half, bro. Tested in a but it could have been another story. I could have been dead. Because that if that Land Rover, if that Land Rover would have um one second, I'll show you. One second. If that Land Rover would have yeah. been three yeah, uh, I'll show you where the damage was. One second. So this is a podcast, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, the in the breeze. It's very organic and, yeah, it turned out to be a podcast. Yeah, subhanAllah. Like I said, it was... Um, just Next time we need to, when you come to Qatar, we need to do one from Fodruckers or one of those places I'll take you for dinner, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what? We'll, we'll, do, we'll do something next time I'm in Qatar, definitely. Inshallah. So. Uh, let me just see if I can show you my car. Just trying to think how to do that. <laughs> Um, okay, I know what to do. Traumatic, traumatic, traumatic few days. So if I do it this way, and then I'll show you. I'll show you my car and I'll show you um, their car. How much does a one bedroom flat rent cost in Qatar? Uh, depends what kind of flat you're looking for. But uh, the rent prices here are very expensive. A one bedroom flat in you know, not a very nice area will probably be costing around three and a half, four thousand riyals a month. Oh, is this in Qatar? Yeah, somebody that's. Well, I just happen to be a Qatar agent. But like a decent flat, you're looking around seven, eight K reals, which is around a thousand, three, four hundred pounds. What's that? Um, I was saying like a decent flat in a nice area is around seven or eight thousand reals. Oh, okay. Yeah. Somebody's asking in the chat how much is a bed, one bed flat. Hamza, I'm an American Christian, but I have a question about an interesting verse in the Quran, if I may ask. No. No. I'll show you the car that hit me first. Is it a Range Rover? Yeah. Uh, yes, name. I'm, I'm in Qatar, in Doha. Yeah. Name's asking, are you from, from Qatar? I said, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so this is what, this is the car. This is the car that hit me. Oh, the size of that beast. That's the same car I've got. Oh, is it? Yeah, is it the, yeah. I think it looks like the same. It's a Range Rover um, supercharge, isn't it? Is it? No, that's this is my car. car. Allah. That's the my beautiful car, car, man. But can imagine if that was three foot up. Allah. So how how come she hit you? Was she like intoxicated or something? I don't know what she was, mate. That's my car. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Honestly. Subhanallah. Oh no, if that was the way she hit me, yeah. If we move up a little bit, if, if that impact was on my door, um she was like a getaway driver, bro. I thought someone nicked the car. Yeah. But I, I thought I thought someone had, had stolen the car the way she was driving. You know what I mean? Subhanallah. And uh, I, I swear she must have been looking at her phone because we're, we're, we're parked in traffic, we're parked at the lights, yeah, and you come bang, you know what I mean? Yes. And then not just that, you hit, you, you go out and then you come back in again, she must have like pulled it in like that, smack another car's in front, take off their wing mirrors and that, 
and then speed off, but then obviously your tire's gone, so you stop there. You know what I mean? Subhanallah. So Mohammed El Shemeli, it's not the bad an accident, oh believe me. Um it was bad. It was bad. My car's pretty chunky, don't get me wrong. It's you know it's a Toyota CHR, but the way she hit us, especially stationary. If you're moving, you know, you could carry some yeah. of the velocity, but if you're stationary, it's just straight into you. No, no nowhere to go. A Yaris, no, 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 it's a CHR. So did did you like not kick off and like what are you doing? Yeah, but she, she's like saying, oh, no, my boss will call my boss and call my boss, this, that, the other. Next thing you know, some geezer turns up, some Asian guy, oh, yeah, I know her, she's a friend, you know, my friend, works, she works with my friend or something like that. Then, like, two other geezers turn up, then all of a sudden she's gone. I'm like, what happened to her? Oh, she, she's, she's over there, she's not feeling well, this, that, the other. When the police came, where is she? Oh, I think she's gone to the hospital. I was like, what, what happened? And then everyone disappeared. The car got told, they all disappeared. Yeah. We were just left there thinking, what the hell just happened? That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, subhanAllah. Honestly, I don't drive a Prius. Okay. I am an Uber driver. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was my... Um, crazy day yesterday. Alhamdulillah, like you say, uh, it could have been... everything. Just fair in everything, alhamdulillah. Yeah, 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 subhanAllah. But, you know, it's just, it's just the way we were treated. We were left on our own. Like, our day has been completely destroyed. But mm. someone's incompetence, and they're probably at home laughing or chilling about now or having some nice food, relaxing. And we're like, our whole day's been wrecked. Yeah, we've lost the day, we've lost whatever we were planning to do that day got wrecked. I lost my car, you know what I mean? Like, we came, we came back last night, right? And we wanted, we wanted to order a takeaway. And this takeaway, I'm not joking, right? 70 calls, and it was kept going down. Now the mailbox is full, and then someone would answer, uh, someone answer, and we're like. Yeah, hi. Can we order? Um, what? <laughs> my, my daughter was going mad. She goes, why did they keep on the phone down? Just, every time the mailbox, they fall. Sorry, the mailbox, they fall. I'm like, ringing, 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 ringing. And then you get through and you're giving the order. Yeah, can we have two, uh, two, 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 PL, PL. Sorry, sorry, what? Sorry, okay. Yeah, two, two, PL. <laughs> uh, and, and in the end, I, well, I swear, bro, uh, 70 calls later, I, I was phoning an Uber. And I was going to that restaurant. Honestly, I, I, I don't care. Because we had no car. If we had a car, I would have just gone and got it. We had yeah, no yeah, car. Yeah. So I was phoning an Uber. It was going to cost me £10 to get an Uber to this bloody restaurant. And I just wanted to walk in and say, can you pick up your bloody phone? <laughs> <laughs> 70 flipping calls. Don't they have a website you can order online? No, they don't do delivery or anything. Oh, they okay. used to, but they, but they don't. This particular restaurant don't do just eat and delivery because they shut down for a while. And I don't know whether they, they stopped the contracts with these guys or what. I don't know. But <coughs> imagine that was on top of my day. Subhanallah, and, bro. And we're just okay. like, people are just incompetent. <laughs> Subhanallah. It was, it was a trying day. <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And that's what Big Ash just said. You found out you get five grand for my old van. Yeah. So and and it took me. I I phoned the MOT guys today, and it took me. I don't know from. It took me the day to get it all done, but from the start of today to the end of the day, my car's on the road again. My other car. Alhamdulillah. So I didn't have to get joke with these flipping enterprise higher cars and all that. Alhamdulillah. All right, bro. <sighs> let's, I think it's two thirty here. I need to. Yeah, you got up. Sorry about all that uh, podcast well, at the end. But... It's good. It's good, man. I enjoyed it because Fajr here is in at three thirty, so uh, I have an hour. So you know. yeah, no, I'm, I'm in. Uh, yeah. All right, dude. You take right, care. Bro. Zakhla khair for joining. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant presentation. You raised far to such a level that I'm, I think no one else, everyone's going to struggle to match that. I can see you were doing that, and you did your research, and you you had it all in place. Zakhla khair for that. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, he's on Twitter. He's on, he on YouTube? Yes, of course. He's on YouTube. I will see him again in the den. Uh, I'm a poet and I don't know it. Um, what we'll be discussing... I don't, I don't know if I'm going we'll, to... We'll, we'll, we'll find something. Um, yeah, I need to get... There is something we can definitely talk about. Um, I, I just got to, I don't know, find my sensitive side. No, we, we, there's stuff we can do, inshallah. Um, the thing I'm, is, you see, yeah. they'll come for your stream... And then you'll go, and then I'll do a Sunday chill, and they'll still be in my chat. <laughs> that's my problem. No, no, that's my concern. 
because they're, they're going to feel all loved and welcomed and understood <laughs> in your stream. Oh, and then sorry. in my stream, it's going to be like, never seen before in my life, Gavna. What are you doing here? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I, have to, I have to be careful what doors and gates I, I open because once you open those <laughs> gates and Pandora's boxes, it, there ain't no going back. Anyway, oh, just like a lot of Aaron, just oh, yeah. So this is your YouTube channel, Dr. Abro Issa's channel is there. Yeah, Dr. I need I need some subscribers. I only have 940. Is that it? Why? Because I'm is it not content asking. or what? I don't know, bro. When's Dr. Issa Abu Issa coming back? When I get invited. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. You know what? I have an idea. We should do a stream analyzing all the du'at that are doing uh, online dawah. No, don't do that. Do a psychological profile, starting with you. Don't do that. You can do me. I don't care. I'm joking. I, I'm, I'm, I'm emotional. I'm a psychopath. I don't care. I'm joking. Man. I'm only joking as well. But I, I, I might. I, I do like the idea of analyzing those Christians that speak this corner. Though. I, I think that's you, you. You can diagnose them. Yeah. Sounds but you, you'll be able to spot the symptoms. Yeah. Look, yeah. Yeah. Thinking. Definitely. <laughs> All right, dude. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Take care. Well, alaikum assalam. Beautiful brother, mashallah. That was really, really good. That that was a for Hamza's den. That was quality. Um, because we don't do that quality here. Here, it's rough. It's raw. It's ready. Like it? Don't like it? It is indeed what it is. Um, but I was, I was, I was impressed. I was impressed with that. And um, you're going to see my my arguments. Um, you'll see how much I benefited from that uh, presentation. I, I learned so much stuff, and you know me. I like to learn stuff, and then I like to utilize that stuff, and I like to weaponize that stuff, and then I like to slap people about the head with that stuff. So uh, look forward to that. Put channels in categories. I think it was. Yeah, Chase, but honestly, honestly, people, people don't care. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about you. Nobody. That's why it's important, mashallah, take care of your family because at least family can care. You know what I'm saying? We have a new member. Uh, and yeah, it was really, really good. I like it. Uh, the CHR is a really good car. We love that car, mashallah. And it was really good car because we managed to get it like no deposit and 0% finance. It was so funny. We got it on 0% finance. And then they rung us up like a month later or two months later. No, about three months later. Oh, congratulations. Good news. I'm like, yeah, what's the good news, mate? Yeah, you, 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 you're, you're entitled to an upgrade. I go, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, your, your car, we can upgrade it for a brand new car, new model. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Um, what, 0% finance? Oh, well, no, it won't be 0% why why would i do that as a, it's not percent finance right now why would i why would i change it for something i have to pay interest on do you know what i mean so no nah, thanks but no thanks mate yeah and then this bloody idiot bashed into us has that lion roar gotten shorter no no that's it. did i stop it i'll pay back did i did i interrupt it That's it. Thank you, Tuba. I care about my family as well. Like I said, uh, it could have been so very different if that woman had hit us three foot further forward because her car came at an angle. So if it had come at an angle into my door, um, I wouldn't be here now. I don't think it may not have killed me, um, but it would have put me in hospital. I truly believe, and I wouldn't be doing a stream. So I'm allowed me. So I'm 
I've no idea what you're on about, Mohammed Al Shalali. This is like the third comment you've made that I've just no idea what you're banging on about. All right, um, I'm gonna say goodbye now. Uh, it's been lovely seeing you. Um, I shall see you again for Sunday chill, inshallah. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.